I'm smiling. I was smiling because people say I never smile. Listen, uh, June 12th, 2017, uh, as predicted, I would eventually be by myself. Misery loves company, but it can't get any. Uh, Gavin has a visitor. Gavin's still here from his show, and he got a, uh, he's got an interview, so my one audience was going to leave, is now leaving. But anyway, uh, June 12th, 2017, my kids are going to be, uh, two weeks left of school, and then I'm fucked, because then they're around full-time, and, uh, whatever. So, uh, I want to give a shout-out to the fans that came to the brokerage show. On uh, last Thursday, it was it, we had a lot of fun. Uh, shout out to uh, Kumia and uh, Keith for making it possible. Because if they weren't there, we would have been in a lot of trouble. I mean, we're still in a lot of trouble anyway. But uh, um, they definitely helped sell tickets. Kumia has some funny jokes. I don't even know if does does he do that joke about uh, the best drink of all time is first one out of rehab. First time I've heard it in public. Uh, <laughs> that was a good joke. Anyway, I'll let him tell it on the show. I don't know. I don't want to. I don't want to get him in trouble with his sponsor. But it was fun. It was. It was a lot of fun. So right before I was going up, people were like, "Oh, you know what? You got to bring um, like right as I'm, the, you know, uh, Berg MC. He did a great job. But uh, right as he was about to bring me up, these there's a group of guys like right before I went up a stage were like, "You got to bring Jimmy back." I'm like, "What?" They go, bring Jim. That's what I actually said on stage. Bring Jimmy back. And uh, so whatever. It's not that simple. Then then, then the fucked up thing is uh, um, I was Saturday night. I was doing spots. I think it was Saturday night. Yeah, Saturday night I'm doing spots. Uh, I took the train in from New Jersey. And uh, I took the train in from New Jersey. And... Um, I get off the train and I'm like adjusting my phone because my phone was either on. I think I was turning it off because when I get on the train, I try to turn my phone off on the path because cause when, when I get out of the train, and the, my phone doesn't work because it's just good. The reception's all fucked up. So I try to turn it off. So anyway, I was turning it off or turning it on something. But I stopped before I got off the train. I stopped at like some chairs there and I was fucking with my phone. Then I'm walking up the stairs and there's a guy in front of me. I'm like, holy shit, that looks like Jimmy from the back. You know, I don't know. Anyway. So then, uh, then I start, f yeah, then I start following him. I start following the guy because I'm like, I got to confirm if it's Jimmy or not. Because he, because then I'm thinking like, this guy walked right by me. Sometimes maybe he didn't see me because I wasn't, it wasn't like I was facing anybody. So then uh, I followed Jimmy back. To, you know, he walks by the comedy cell. That's where I was headed. I, he walks to the comedy cellar. Then he walks to another club up the street. I'm not going to say what it is. Anyway, so it was Jimmy. So I'm like, did he fucking like walk right by me and not? Um, and not say hello, or did he not notice me? In any case, I was like, I don't know. I mean, it's hard. To, it's hard for some reason. People don't like me, and uh, <laughs> no, no. It's just I'm like, did Jimmy fucking see me and just walk by me? I'm like, we don't. Our blood. We don't even have bad blood. Like when I see Lenny, Lenny avoids me, and I avoid him. But I mean, I don't even have that much bad blood with Jimmy. Like I just gave him a couple of weeks off, and he took it as a permanent uh, fucking dismissal. But whatever. Let's, uh, whatever. So Chris is here. Hey, Chris, man. Chris was a little late, but, uh. Hey, I'm here. Why are you wearing glasses? That's what? my thing. That's my. Oh, no, I just, this is my thing. Oh, my God. You came in with glasses on or no? Yeah, no, I always wear glasses. I have, I have very sensitive pupils in the summer. For real? Yeah, they're very sensitive to, Take uh. Off your glasses, let me see. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> Hey, no, I, you know, you know what it is? Cause like, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta do like a shtick with my, with this thing. I like it. Look, that's cool. I gotta, Cause I don't, I don't wear glasses normally. So, and then in one show, uh, somebody had glasses. They told me to put my, put glasses on. I, I just thought it was, it looked cool. So I'm just going to keep my glasses on. I, yeah, but you got it. You can't, you got to take your glasses off. Cause then we look like fucking ZZ Top. I know. Plus I get, I have to get my glasses from the big and tall store. Cause I need wide temples. Cause I have a big head. And you know what it's like? They, they put the white temples on, but they keep like the normal size glasses. So these glasses look little on my head. Yeah, you look like a. You look small, a, right? Yeah. So it looks stupid. You look like a bit of a something. A mongoloid. Yeah. That's what my wife says. Well, wait. Uh, so, it's Chris, tell them who you are. Hey, I'm Chris Roach, and uh, I'm a stand up comedian. Where am I looking? I'm a stand up comedian. Oh, Thank you. I'm a stand up comedian. I'm from Long Island, New York. And. Uh, I'm on a show with Kevin James called Kevin Can Wait. What? 
Yes. Where I play his dopey friend, Mott, with seven kids. And Adam Sandler's wife plays my wife. For Jack, real? Yeah. She Adam Sandler's real wife? Plays my wife, yes. I didn't Jack, know that. Jackie Sandler is my wife in the, on the show. Is she an actress? Yeah. She's, on, but yeah. she's a real actress? She's a real actress. How old is she? I think that's how they met, I, I, I think. She's a model. Isn't she a model? She's beautiful, yeah. She's beautiful. And do you, have, do you get to kiss her? No. <laughs> I, haven't even met, I haven't even met Adam yet. Like there's, but, but then they fly his wife out to do the scene. Fly his wife out, yeah, yeah, and she's really cool. Uh, he probably just give, gives her the thing just to get her out of the house. Right? I don't know. I don't know. I haven't met him. Like one time, I was eating lunch with her, and she hangs up the phone. She's like, "Oh, Adam said hello," and I was like, "Hamana, hamana." And uh, Adam's nice. He's a regular dude. There are a couple. There are a couple of scenes like we're talking. Like we're at a, one scene. We're at a, a sushi restaurant with Kevin and his wife, and. I just put my arm around my TV wife and I'm talking, and in my head I'm like, I'm hoping Adam doesn't get mad for that. No, he can't get mad. All right. Well, he's an actor. I know, but I mean, he knows it's pretend. I want to be in one of his. I thought you were going to worry about bad breath. When you worry about bad. Oh, breath? all the time. Oh, well, I'm very self-conscious about. Like, I never eat. Like, uh, on, on the days we film, I never. Like, they have amazing spreads. The yeah. uh, craft services. Yeah, you got to be I, careful. I never have anything. Gar I don't. I don't want to breathe garlic in Kevin's face or something like that. And right. Next thing I know, I'm back. Uh, let me let me get to my, one of my points about this. So so you play a big dopey guy, right? Yep, played it before. <laughs> no, they, I because I don't believe in acting. I just think they get like a guy who obviously you're a big dopey guy. No offense. Yeah, no, but this this it's finally paying off. But I'm saying like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but when you're like a big dopey guy, they don't want a guy who's gonna have to do a lot of acting. Nope, you know what I mean, there's very little acting going on here. Like, so, no, because it it makes it complicated for them. So they they want to get a guy who's like the type. You know what yes. I mean? Like if, if you if you're looking for a big dopey guy and you walk and the, and plus they've seen your stand up and your stand up is like I'm you're dopey. a big dopey guy. But I'm, I am who I am. So so my theory is like there's no such thing as acting. Like you know when you see when you see Al Pacino, Al Pacino unless he's playing a blind guy, but he's still right. basically playing the same dude. The key you is only, you can only you can only like make it that much different. Right. I think the key is don't act. Like some people will try to act like I need to talk like this or I need to act like just look at the look at the lines and speak it like a normal person would speak. Yeah, but that's my point. So they 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 know that. So they don't want to get a guy who who's gonna have to act. You know what I mean? Like oh. like when I did it, well, I did a pilot one time, and Gaffigan this is before he got hot. Gaffigan wanted to play my brother who was fat. You know, so uh, uh, so my manager was like, Gaffigan wants to play your fat brother. I'm like, well, Gaffigan's not fat. He goes, he thinks he is. I'm like, I don't give a fuck what he thinks he is. He's not fat. Like he talks about how he's fat, but he's not fat. Like I wanted no. to my brother. Who who he who he's playing is fat. He's fat. Well, he gained like two hundred pounds because he wanted to bulk up, but he just right. gained the weight. He never lifted. Yes, I. Uh, you know what I hate is like when I get an audition and I look at the breakdown, and it says they're looking for a, a fat guy. But fat could mean beer belly, or fat could mean round. Like I just went out for a pilot for uh, Tracy Morgan, yeah. and the scene was they wanted a, a big guy, or they say big guy. And the scene was, I'm on a bunk bed on top of Tracy, and he's like, there's no way I'm sleeping under you. Yeah. And then I said to my manager, I'm like, they're looking for a fat, round yeah, guy. Yeah, right. You know, this, they, they, it's like they're- They don't want you. No. But that's why it's so dumb that you, you come in and you go, Ugh. I mean, that's a classic Natterman story when he went to audition for something. And he was like looking at, you know, there's like a people waiting outside the casting office. And he's, he goes, look at all these fucking nerds. Yeah. So then he goes, he, he realized he was a nerd. Yeah. Because he's, you know what I mean? So if you yeah. go and, I mean, if they, if the breakdown says you want a fat guy or a dumb guy, you know. But then on the flip side of the coin, I just wear, I just go out for uh, something that Ben still is directing. Do you remember that was, uh, so that uh, it was upstate prison. This prison guard helped these prisoners escape like two yeah. years ago. So it's a eight series documentary on that. But I, I originally went out for a guard, a security guard. I can see that, and, right? And then I'm not even kidding. I can see he's, he, as even one of the convicts. Yeah, well, yeah. The and dumb the, one, of course. The dumb one, of course. Yeah. <laughs> the guy's always like, "Why don't we go this way?" And they're like, "No, that's where the fucking." What's for dinner? That's where the police station is. So, wait, then I get the I get an email from my manager the next day, and it says from casting. Casting things, Chris would be better suited for the role of Fat Mike. I was like, Fat Mike? You know, it's like, you never, the word fat. fat. I, I'm, I'm really, you know, I got to. you lose gut. weight? I lost weight, but I still got a gut. and I. How much weight did you lose? 30 pounds, but I, I grew the beard to cover up my. Uh, How much are they paying you for this thing? I don't know. I, I didn't get it yet. 
fucking good yet. It's like to ask the awkward question. Nobody asked the obvious question. How much uh, are you getting paid? Uh, you know, it's, don't you get? Don't you haven't seen a check yet? From what? From uh, Kevin can wait. Kevin, well, Kevin, wait. Of course, yes. How much they pay you for that? Well, not as much as Kevin makes. <laughs> Not as much Nobody as, will ever fucking ask the obvious question. How much are you getting? I can paid? tell you this much: I am the uh, I'm the bottom of the totem pole. Did you get a raise from because you got second season. I don't know. I don't know. I think How I won't. Do you not know this? Well, who's this your, is, who's your manager? Can you say that? Well, July thirtieth, my manager is her name's Angela Galizio. She's uh, from G and G Talent Small. From July on July thirtieth, or I think on June thirtieth, uh, somewhere around June thirtieth, the they, first week they of pick it up. Yeah, they start. Bringing in the actors and saying, "All right, they start negotiating." At least for the, uh, for the maybe not the main the main guys. They already did that, but for yeah. us little guys, around June thirtieth. How many how many shows were you in? Last season, fourteen out of twenty four. That's good. Yeah, it was good, and I'm hoping uh, for at and least. And they were the going to do a spinoff with you. I don't know. I hope. Meet the mutts. Meet the mutts. <laughs> Step right. Are, up. are you retired or you have a job? On the show, we're all retired cops. And you you were a cop too. Yeah. What are you doing now? On the show or in real life? Yeah, no, as the character. Because I was a cop in real life, too. Yeah. But uh, the character... You were a cop in real life? Yeah, I was NYPD for like two years. And what happened? Oh. Uh, had a couple of... We, no, I, I, uh, the, the captain brought me into his office, and we came up with a mutual agreement. I decided the job was no longer for me, and they decided I was fired. Wait, you were a cop in, NY, in New York? Yeah, in Where? Queens. In Queens. Where? Uh, the 105 precinct. My two brothers retired cops. My sister retired cop. NYPD. You and cut it. My dad. I hated it. But you could, yeah, because you got to be serious, right? You got to be. It takes a certain type of personality. My one brother was a highway cop, and those guys could be. You get pulled over by a highway cop. They could be bastards. And my brother loved state it. State police or no? Loved it. They were kind of like state police because they. It was a detail. You. They 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 patrolled like say the Grand Central Parkway. Yeah. You get pulled over. They come out with the leather boots. That was them. Yeah. And uh, you know, of course, oh, right, right, right. They had to write a lot more summonses than the regular cops did. If you wanted to stay there, so they you went into it because because they were they did it. You're the youngest. <laughs> yeah. You're a fucking failure as a cop. Oh yeah, well, you're on a know. TV show. Yeah. Are they all apologizing to you? No. My what my dad thought was funny is when I first got the show with Kevin. It was right around the time where I would have been able to retire as a cop the same summer. Wow. So I thought I thought I was the only one to notice it, but he realized it too. He goes, yes, yeah, isn't that weird that you got the show with Kevin and this is just the summer you could have retired? And so, so, he, so what's, what was his point, that you could have been a cop and then? No, I, I don't know what his point was, but uh, <laughs> he, he knew I was miserable. So it took you me. that long. So you you be you retired as a cop, and then you became a comic, or you already wanted to be a comic? No, from uh, being a cop when I le when I left the police department, I went back to my old job. I was managing a, a chain of high end adult stores on Long oh Island. God. Yeah, somebody told me about this. Yeah, I was. They were, they were a manager of like a of a porno boutique. No, no, no. They were adult entertainment stores, Kevin. What does that mean? Like peep shows? I hated when people called so you. So you and people knew that, and they would. Were your friends come in and like mock you all the time? All the time. I. I it was like it got old so quick. And you couldn't. You. You didn't get laid out of it, right? Were there? I, I got that asked that a lot. None. Was there Was there like adult action there? Like, like the peep shows in Times Square, where there's like no. Girls? See, we did. A, they were on Long Island, and we made them so they were like Victoria's Secret in the front. And then yeah, you had like, yeah. like Spencer's gifts in the middle, and then yeah. after that, the fist. Uh, no, we, oh, so it was all. How'd you get into that? It was a friend. Do, we, do you love and the money will follow? A friend of mine. <laughs> a friend of mine owned it. Asked me if I wanted to help out. And you became the manager in like one day because district manager. <laughs> Do you have a business card? I used to have what business cards. They're, they're not in the they, sent, they were right? no, they were very serious. They sent me to school. They sent me to like uh, really. They sent me to this Dale Carnegie Training Institute. What? And that's what led me to be a stand-up comedian. Oh, because you got your confidence. They they put because you had to go to this training institute and do stand-up. Oh, they talk, they talk talk. And I realized speaking? I had a bad public speaking fear, and I would start adding humor into my presentations. And at the end of this, like say twelve week course. <laughs> Somebody said to me, you ever think about doing stand-up comedy? I'm like, well, you know, I was class comedian in school, but I always had anxiety, and I was always... Because uh, yeah, a lot of times the people don't understand, like, uh, like the first time I did stand-up, I thought, like, I was, I got myself mentally prepared to, like, have a panic attack. Yeah. When I actually, the first time I did it, I, well, I was totally calm. Partly yeah. because I was mentally prepared, 
But also just like you, you're not, you know, some, a lot of times you're nervous, but then when you get on stage, it goes away. Yeah, once you start speaking. Yeah, but a lot, for most people, it's the opposite. They're calm normally. And then when they get on stage, if they have to public speak, they fucking panic, you know? Yeah. No, I've seen it. I've seen it. Uh, I'm, I'm nervous all the time. Like, if I'm on the so. train, I'm just anxious as a motherfucker. But when I get on stage, it just, for the most part, goes away. It's, it's very therapeutic getting on stage yeah, but, but it was even odd to me that i the the it was just odd to me the first time i got up on stage i thought i would have like all this nervousness and anxiety but in the opposite was true i just got calm and i just started talking yeah so it was like therapy i killed, I killed. You, know, you did huh <laughs> no I, uh, I did i did get some laughs but uh the first time I did, it was off the I, crowd it was I, it wasn't like prepared material oh, that was killing my first show was for family and of course family and friends what do you mean family like you do these uh i took this comedy course on Lone oh Lone. yeah that must have been horrible then yeah wait then you have a graduation show yeah and uh you have the graduation show and your whole family comes out oh my God. they're laughing at everything you say and then at the end of the show, some guy comes up to me and he says, this guy, Billy Bingo, you know him, the fireman? Oh. He goes, hey, I have an open mic here on Thursday night. Why don't you come back? And I came back and I did the same. And bombed. Ate, ate it. <laughs> like I, 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 I learned what bailing was because after yeah. the three minutes I was off. Yeah. And uh, well, It's funny how, like, I remember I told my friend that I, I said, I, you know, I one show was good. And then actually the first show I started, uh, it was this. It was the Monday of Memorial Day weekend, so it was just like a good crowd, you know. Yeah. I figured it'd be a good crowd because it was a holiday weekend. But then, it, and then the, the, the next time I did it, the next couple of times I did the same, and I was just bombing. I was like, yeah. "What the fuck?" That's when you kind of realize, like, all crowds aren't the same. No, I can't even imagine performing at these fucking graduations where it's all friends and family because. Well, even I didn't tell anybody I was still in stand up with my family I until hate when family comes out. Oh, until now. uh. Until I passed at this club, I started in Chicago, and I didn't I didn't tell anybody until I passed the club because I didn't want to have to fucking deal with it. So when I passed right. the club, I remember I was I was not living at home. I had an apartment, and I but I went home for dinner or whatever. And I don't know how many people were at dinner, but I, I said I said yeah I was I'm doing stand up comedy, you know. And one of my brothers was like, what are you talking about? What do you, what do you mean? I go no, I went to this I've been going to this club. And I passed at the club. I'm like a rep. I'm like a regular comic there now. <laughs> and he goes, he goes, he goes. You're not even the funniest one in the family. What the like basically? That's basically hysterical. Like, no, basically, like I needed permission from the family first. You know what I mean? Like I couldn't, I couldn't go off on my own because <laughs> I didn't get anybody's blessing. Then, so then, uh, I then they took it upon themselves. My brother Tom and my parents. They because they, you know, they found out where the club was that I worked. So they come to the show. And uh, and then it was just like after that, then once you pass, then the kind of excitement of that goes away. And then you're just doing sets and you're just right. fucking bombing. You're getting shitty spots. So I had the first spot on a Sunday night show at this at the club. And uh, so, it you know, I, I don't do well. And then I'm, I'm going outside to have a cigarette or whatever after this spot. And then uh, I see my brother. He's coming in. So I go, I go, what are you doing? He goes, we came to see the show. I go, well, I already went on. He goes, he goes, no, we saw it. So, so, he got, <laughs> so basically what happened was he went out to the car for something, but they were all there when I did the set. So after the show, like I was at the bar, they had a bar in, like in the back of the room, whatever. But anyway, I was leave, they were all leaving. So I, I said, I'm like, why? Because I didn't get any laughs. So I said, I said, why were you, why were you laughing? You know, and my dad goes, you're bombing. Like basically like we're not going to embarrass ourselves and. <laughs> make a fucking we're not gonna make a scene of ourselves just because we're related to you so right that's why i just like and that's why i didn't tell them in the first place because i didn't need the i didn't need the uh the the fucking whatever of that of dealing with that so so yeah but but i can but nowadays when you do open mic these open micers you know they 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 put them through fucking hell you know they got to bring their friends Oof. and everything no they got to bring their friends and they're not good I know. So, so they got to bring all their friends to the audience as the audience or else they don't get on. And then their friends go and then they, they see them suck. And then they go and then they're like, oh, well, you suck. And uh, so the next for the rest of your life until you do like the whatever big show to them, they think you suck. You're only as funny as your last set. Right? And the last one they remember. So, yep, even, so yep. even if True. So even if even if, uh, you know, when people go like when guys get big, like bring up Gavigan again, like when Gavin, people are like Gavigan. I'm like Gavigan sucks, you know what I mean? Because I remember him when he sucked, <laughs> and I don't see him now. I don't, I don't see him do sets now. Even if I saw him do a set, it would be a little fucking baby set. 
<laughs> at the, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Even when I opened for Louis in Philadelphia and they were all fucking cheering, I'm like, you don't, you guys don't know Louis? Right. Because I'm like, I know Louis from like fucking the yeah. dumbest motherfucker of all time. When he started here, he was just like an idiot. He would get into all kinds of trouble. Like, he was an idiot. <laughs> So they're like cheer, and I'm like, you motherfucker. They, like, the they don't know the guy you know. No, they don't. No, of course. <laughs> and then Louis, when I tell him for Louis, Louis goes, do that bit, because he liked this one joke I was doing. He goes, don't forget to do that bit. And uh, uh, I go, no, I will. And then he goes, he goes, and don't go long. I go, what happens? He goes, I was eight minutes set. He goes, don't go long. I go, what if I go long? He goes, then the guy after you loses time. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> you know what I mean, we're standing on stage at the fucking arena in uh, Philadelphia, you know. But you can't help but think, it's just Louis. I'm not afraid of him. Like, I, you're afraid of him because, you know, he can fucking have you squashed. But, hey, but I still know him as Louis. You know, I'm not, like, afraid. So that's what I'm saying. All these, all your friends who see you suck, they're going right. to think you suck forever. Oh, yes. Even when you, even when you get better, they still, they still have that image of yep. you sucking. And then when you start, like, five years later, hey, come out to one of my shows, please. Yeah. Please come out to my show this Saturday night. Yeah. I was, after my first set, I was uh, I was bouncing at a, a bar in Port Jefferson, and I remember standing at the door thinking to myself, I, I can't be doing this anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm a stand-up comedian. And I was after my first set, but I can't be doing <laughs> yeah, That's funny, too, where you go through these things where you're like, I'm good. I'm fucking great. I'm good. I'm I great. Killed. I killed. People come up to me, hey, man, I heard you killed the show. I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, that's why you want to, I want to actually have a class where I don't really teach comics anything. I just tell them, like, how, how dumb they are. You it really I mean? is. Yeah. Like, just go, like, listen, listen, you can have a good show. Like, I remember I've had shows where I'm doing, I did 15 minutes of stand-up New York, and, like, every joke worked. And then you just realize, and then now you're looking back, you're like, it was just a hot crowd. You know what I mean? So, sometimes just a hot crowd. Like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't. Anybody. It doesn't, it doesn't, uh. You know, it's not the joke or it's like, you know, some jokes are good. Some jokes, you know, have, some jokes have legs, some jokes don't. Anyway, but, but that's just the way it is. Anyway, I was watching, I didn't watch the game last night, but you're a big hockey guy, right? Yeah. So I tweeted uh, that, I said, how come, uh, you know, I said, hockey players are real men. And uh, compare, and I said, they never get into trouble like other, any other sport. They never. And they, I, said, uh, I, said, what do you, I said, what do you think that's from? I don't know. <laughs> Well, we, we, so people are like, wait, I, a lot of guys are like, hey, I like where you're going with this. because I'm afraid where you're going with this. No, but it's just, <laughs> no, but it's just like fucking, uh, it's my, I mean, it's mostly they're Canadian, but also they don't, they don't get into trouble because they, they, first of all, it's like, I don't even know how to say it, but you know what I'm saying, right? Yeah, like you see them, it's funny, you see them coming. Uh, no, they're just, they're good. See, look at I say. Yeah, they, they show up. They show up before the game. They're all, like, in dress, dressed in suits and listening to the headsets, and they're very, like, quiet. Then you see uh, other players come in just wearing, like, jumpsuits and whatever, and they're getting arrested. They have 10 kids. What do you mean? Other other uh, athletes? Other mean? sports. Uh, well, what, are you, what are you trying to say? I'm just saying that. Hey, Mike. The hockey players seem to be, like, really uh, just no, Chris? nerdy. Hey, man. Oh, hey, Chris. Hey, great to meet you. Nice to meet you. You guys, all, you guys have a lot in common. You both got rejected by Esty at the Comedy Cellar. You know, you I didn't really get rejected. I think I just yeah, I didn't uh, get rejected either. And, uh, yeah, what she what happened? Next year. What? She say? I don't know. I guess I went a little long. <laughs> went long? No, but I got lit early, so I, I. Uh, no, I was gonna have Tim shirts. <laughs> I'm wearing black too, but I don't have no fucking shit on my shirt. Yeah, I don't. I don't get rejected about SD. I no, but uh, I got. I got. I got. Actually, got Tim the all day. I mean, Chris Tim. Roach. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Actually, got Chris you heard the about my rejection. Mm. <laughs> oh, I got Chris the audition, and then and then SD SD didn't like him. You know. You didn't tell me she didn't like. Me. You told me that she said that she didn't have room for me. Well, I don't know. Oh do man. Draw? You want me to draw you a picture? She didn't like you. I killed. Anyway. Did you think you had a good set? No, I thought I had an okay set. No, but you know the mistake you made was you you got you open with a, you know you open with a bad joke. You no. open that stupid fucking umbrella joke. Mistake. That kills that joke. Yeah, kills where? The, the, the mistake I made was following Mike Vecchione. <laughs> <laughs> That's true too. Oh, Vecchione. Yeah, if Vecchione does well, he's hard to follow because they're in that Vecchione rhythm, you know. And then he does those he does those rhythm jokes, and he he does really well. But you should, you got to start with like a joke about yourself. Yeah, that's the thing. See, and I need same to... thing with uh, with Tim Dillon. Like he yeah. didn't he didn't uh, he started joke about millennials, but it's like 
do a joke about how you're gay and whatever. That's yeah. a, right. It's okay. a more personal. Do you know what is the crowd has to lock into you like I'm um, immediately. You should have oh, then the thing about how you're you're on a diet and yeah, oh. I know. But you know it's like I saw because being from Long Island, you, you come into the city and I I, I psych myself out. I overthink and I'm like because I think. If you if you work in the city too much, you can like pick up bad habits. Or if you work on Long Island the road yeah, too much, course. you can pick bad. That's up why habits. I say move it around. So there's a good healthy balance, and I'm trying to get into the city more. But I remember there was a couple times I have I've had auditions, and I like I'm overthinking. I'm like, well, this is a city. I shouldn't uh, I shouldn't do that joke about being on a diet because they don't like that. Do I have a homeless guy joke? Oh, you know, I stop panicking. Yeah. I stop. Pan- I know the book at UCB East. If you want to get up there, yes, I have a bunch <laughs> of college kids stare at you. Yes. Hey, it's Mike Racine. I, uh, how you doing, buddy? Hey, how's it going? Did I say that? Like? Is yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys look like a fucking a, a mice and men or something like that. We're in, a, we're in an SD support group. Uh, no, no, bad way. <laughs> no, but uh, no, but he right afterwards he got cast in the uh, um, Kevin Can Wait that sitcom. Yeah. Oh, cool. Or I call it a shit con. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. What? Can I get in the cell now? Hell Can yeah. he fall more? Does is does he does he have a stunt man? Because every time I don't want I don't really watch the show. No offense, because I'm busy. But he does all his own stunts. It's amazing. No, but he's always fa- every every clip. Sorry. Every <laughs> every clip. It's like I have my son at the show, <laughs> playing with gadgets, and they. Did you drop your fitted spinach? Whatever the oh, fuck it's called. Else. Do, do, do you have one? Do you know, I just. Uh, I, but anyway, let me finish. So. Okay. Sure, so. Sure. Uh, what was I saying? No, he falls every every clip. He's falling like o- over a chair or something. Is you know what always works? Does that test well. Slap, what is he fat slapstick always over? works. Yeah, that too. It slap. always works. Where? What year is it? Slapstick. <laughs> you ever see that video called uh, "Fat Chick Falls Down a Hole"? <laughs> no. Oh, good. I saw that the other day. The woman yeah. on her phone. It's old. It's really old. But she like the, she the like falls black down. Woman? A, no, she's like working at a convenience store and she falls down like a um. The word, but she oh. like disappears. Yeah, there's like a trap door. Oh, I didn't she did like a, this one. And, yeah, let me, let me watch it. What's this? I saw the one where the woman. Oh, I saw the one where the woman. In fact, she's suing Kevin. Can wait. Really? <laughs> I saw the one where the woman falls into the fountain. <laughs> oh my god! It is funny. Oh my funny. god! Is it not funny? If you guys are. <laughs> It's got to be a compound. Oh, my God. How come no one told her that they were opening the fucking trap door? Oh, my God. You should see Look at her. like so many times. She's looking at the camera like, watch, honey, we're going to be rich. <laughs> she really did. She's looking at the camera. Watch she this, honey. Take, like, honey, watch, watch me do my practice. Watch how we get in the ground pool right now. <laughs> Look at her leg. She fucking, oh, the well, That's right there. Oh, you know right there? She's holding on. You know, no, she, she might, because of that padding, she might be all right. Oh, but anyway, that's funny, but Kevin James, he's always falling, but you know, it's he's not really falling. It's like, you are you know what I mean? He's not, he's not. He's let me tell you of, something. We, we did a. Uh, yeah, tell me something. Let me tell you something. something. about show business. Let me tell you something <laughs> falling about falling pays show bills. business. Falling. Is, Have you ever had the fall? Yes. No, on the show. Yes, but that's where I was going. Oh. There was a football scene where we play football, me, Kevin, and the other guys against these Oh, rookies. I think I saw that. That's I cool. Yeah. Saw the like a regular on the show. Kind of, sort of. No, he's on 14 of 24 episodes. Yeah. But anyway, Great. they have a... Murray uh, Davis was on there too, right? I think so. Yeah, but he not like a, that. Yeah, he was on yeah. episode. They, they had a... Uh, what about uh, Joe Starr? Is he a regular like you or no? Yeah, he's he like four or five episodes. He's a pizza guy, right? Yeah. I was on Two Dub Queens this week. What's Two Dub Queens? Not. <laughs> <laughs> never, it's a big mind. show. My wife listens to it. <laughs> right. She does. Yeah, she loves that fucking two dope queens, and I it makes me furious. I'm just I'm just thinking about doing it. Somebody said I should do a show called Two Dope Kings, and then see if they we get publicity just from the lawsuits. You know what I mean? Because then the fucking LGBT would show up, and the Black Lives Matter. Go yes. ahead. Go ahead. Oh. So the scene where I had to fall, they had a, a stunt coordinator work with me. Yeah. The guy hits me from the side. They had me. Thanks f- for coming in, Mike. By the way. Yeah. Thanks. You're welcome. What else am I gonna do? Well, you know what? Were you? Were you finished? Yeah, I was finished. <laughs> <laughs> no, before I forget, because he came in and then no, because he came in last minute because I had two cancellations. You know who canceled? Who? Oh. Harrison Greenbaum. Oh. And Tim Dillon. Mm. Oh. Harrison, I asked, how, you know Harrison Greenbaum? Yes. From what? They're both good guy. I just know them from the comedy circuit. Circuit? Anyway, um, circuit. so Harrison Greenbaum was in a post New York Post article about how he was crushing. About how he fucks. <laughs> <laughs> about how he's Never crushing stops. a lot of puss. No, he, about how he, he, it, was, it was the article about comedy groupies. Oh. So they went to Harrison Greenbaum. <laughs> 
First of all, even if he was like reasonably handsome and like women were attracted to him, with a name like Harrison Greenbaum, how much is he gonna get? How much pussy is he gonna get? Not a lot, right? Anyway, he's gay. So anyway, so oh. he's not out yet, though. I don't know if he's out now. We don't know. Oh, he's out. Just, Good for him. Good for you, Harrison. Good he's for out. you. What? Good for him, he's out. He's he's something, right? Tim Gillen's uh, gay too. Tim Dillon. Yeah, but my I point, didn't know I was that. I have those guys on. I was going to have those guys on because Harrison says he's not gay, but everybody thinks he is. And Tim says he's gay, but nobody thinks he's gay. Oh, you are was... so clever. <laughs> <laughs> so they both canceled because I can't get a break in this business. <laughs> First of all, Harrison can't. Yeah, okay. Harrison. I no, I didn't even ask. I it wasn't. It was Skips. like, why don't I just be Harrison? Okay, well, play act it. Oh, I uh, had sex with a lady the other <laughs> night. And she had a delicious pussy. What did her pussy taste like, Harrison? Uh, I'll never know. <laughs> Skibs. No, so I put on Facebook. Look, I don't want to out anybody, but he does a lot of stuff where you're like, that's how you, you know, the way he talks about sex and women, it's always weird. What, is it, what did he say? Like, he'll be like, oh, I took a girl out the other night, and we went back to my house, and we had sex four times. <laughs> it's like, no guy talks like that. That's true. I was floored when I found out Tim was gay, because uh, I had only worked with the governors yeah. on Long Island, and, like, maybe, like, 10, 15 times, and and, and the, the topic came up in the green room. I said, you're gay? He goes, don't you listen to my act? I'm like, I can't hear you out there. Yeah, governors, you're, you're like, behind a soundproof booth. Yeah, There's you don't a know. chance that Harrison might not be gay. After There's no around. chance. Yeah, There's but after no being around chance. comics for so long, huh? maybe he's not gay. Listen, we're all gay uh, one way or another. You know what I mean? Listen, listen, I've said, I don't want to, I don't want to bash Harrison, because he did, I can read the text he sent me, but he sent me, first of all, he sent, he canceled at 12.30, in the middle of the night on a, on a, when I was taking the train home, it was like, it was late Saturday night. So he goes, I'm in this meeting. And, um, and then Tim sent me, I, Tim, I, I asked Tim once I got Harrison. He's like, Kevin, then, I can't make it. I'm eating pussy right now. <laughs> <laughs> so then I said to Tim, I go, I just confirmed with Tim today. I go, I go, are you coming in today? He goes, I'm at a meet. Uh, he goes, I can't, I'm at a meeting, but that's what Harrison said. So maybe at their same fucking f meeting, you know what I mean? Like that's, I, am I right or no? Why are you guys backing away from the mic? You don't. You're I'm not on CBS. Get, that's that's why I'm backing away from the mic. <laughs> I'm not getting trouble. Fucking. Did you laugh when Kevin said they're both gay? Anyway, the point is that I don't trust nobody about nothing. You know yeah. what I mean? So I'm, I'll say about Harrison. I think he's delightful, but but no one's ever been that gay and not turned out to be gay. Like no one's be, ever been that effeminate and then wrote it out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like Barry Manilow. People had questions. Yeah. You know, he wrote a song people, called Mandy, and he got the scent off him for a little bit. You know what I mean? People are like, hey, maybe he likes a girl named Mandy. On the CD, but it was M-A-N, capital, in capital <laughs> letters, D-Y. It was really Andy. Anyway, so yeah, Andy. so it's impossible. Like, at some point, he's going to be gay. So I don't have a problem with it. So I just wanted to, I thought song. it was going to be a good show where he talks about, I just want, like, he, I could have said, like, what do you, how is it, what's, what's it like crushing pussy a lot, you know? Yeah. But he said he was misquoted, all this shit. But I wanted to interview him anyway. The original Barry Manilow song was, I love to take a man's cock and shove it in my asshole. And they were like, what if we just kept... Mandy. Is that yeah. quicker? <laughs> yeah. What are you doing? You're not going to get fired. How can you get fired? Nobody even listens to my show. Did you get surgery or something? I don't want, I don't want anybody to... Did you get to surgery or something? Yeah, is that why I'm wearing glasses? Anyway. Yeah. No, I'm just doing it. Like, I, I was wearing glasses one day. Someone took a screenshot and they tweeted it. I'm like, I told my wife, I, I go, don't I look cool with glasses on? She goes, you look like an idiot. I go, that's enough. I, that's enough for me. It's a done deal. Forever I'll be wearing glasses. Because if my wife doesn't like it, then I'm in. You know what I mean? That's it. But she's got fancy taste. So. I think it's a good look. It's cool. I'm like cool as a motherfucker, especially in the summer. And your wife's Latina. Yeah, like your wife's wife Latina, too. Married to a couple of Latinas. He used to work in a fucking... Uh, he used to work in an adult, adult entertainment store, not a porno store. I used to get very offended when people say porno they store. They sell gadgets and stuff, but they're out of business, right? No, there's a chain of them on Long Island. I thought the internet put them all out of business. Uh, well, Amazon. They went uh, Amazon.com. It, 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 it affected sales oh, yeah. greatly. It affected oh, yeah. sales greatly. Because uh, I buy all my stuff on Amazon now. I'm just you look like an old. Show up. On the, the, UP, they, they, the UPS guy shows up. I'm like, that might have been my new pussy. You look like an old. <laughs> You look like an old blind comedian that you have to like find in the woods, and he trains you <laughs> on how to say "cunt." <laughs> For like, me, yeah, yeah, he's like a master. You're like comedian. you have to learn how to talk, how to do racial material. 
<laughs> you got to find him in the woods. Uh, yeah, we were trying to do jungle. racial material, but Chris wouldn't play along because I said, I, you know, are you a hockey guy? No. But you know about the sport, right? Kind of. Anyway, most hockey players are, they don't, they're good. You know, I said, I tweeted, I said, they're, 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 uh, they're hardworking. They're real men. They, they, it's a physical sport mm-hmm. and they don't get into trouble off the ice. So, you know, I said, I wonder why that is. And then people are like, oh, I like where you're going with this. Cause obviously there's a racial component and then, you know, and then it doesn't sa- have to be though. It doesn't have to be. No, it absolutely has to be. So sad. Sa- and then Saturday night, uh, um, I tweet or Friday night I came home and I was in a bad mood. So I tweeted, uh, I go, if I was a black comic, I'd be huge. So I just tweeted that, you know, that. and that got more action than I, I was just doing it as like a fucking joke. But I also yeah. think I would be bigger if I was black because I feel that way too, yeah, because it's like white people don't like the white black people like my jokes more than white people do. They always have. And now, especially white people look at me like, what's yeah. your problem? Like, I don't know, but I could definitely have a problem where black people, they fucking eat it up. So even the yep. even the likes of Chris Rock chimed in. Oh yeah. On my fucking face when it went to Facebook, I tweeted it and then it goes to Facebook after it gets cleared by the government. No, but then Chris Rock, who I I forgot we were friends on Facebook. He 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 made a comment. I'm like motherfucker. But then that's what, what you he, really, he said. Like yeah, he goes good luck with that. Good luck following Bruce Bruce and earthquake. And then I was gonna jump in. I didn't read it till I didn't see it for like 24 hours. And then I was going to jump in. I go like, listen, you're all, Wait. I said, all black guys are easy to follow. Cause it's, you all do the same act. White people, white people, white people. I'll be selling merch. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's the right. That's every black dude's act. So I didn't want to get in a fight with Chris Rock on fucking I hosted Facebook. It, yeah. I hosted it. Caroline's. It's that true, right? Once you follow one black guy, you followed them all. Oh, I don't know. I guess you guys are the fucking worst. You, all you have to do, you don't, you're not, you, you're not going to be liable just by nodding your head or going, yeah, you maybe. I want to follow somebody uh, that doesn't do crowd work. That'd be nice. Well, one time I, I hosted at Caroline's uh, and I, I brought up earthquake. <laughs> I go next. Oh, uh, this. You ever follow this guy in Long Island? No. It's like following fucking Billy Joel. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then the last time, the last time uh, I did a gig with him, Tim Crompier. You know him, right? Yeah. You know Tim Crompier. Mm-hmm. Anyway, he's a fucking asshole, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, we're doing this firehouse gig, and uh, and then uh, he picks me up at the train. I got to take the train out there, which I always like to take the train because it's relaxing, right? You're from Long Island, right? Jersey. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> but you get on Long Island Railroad, it's relaxing on a Saturday. You know, it's not as crowded, so I take the train out there. He picks me up. We're driving to the gig. We stop at the firehouse, and then and then what you gonna call it? Uh, as we're getting out of the car. I said to Tim, I go, who, I go, it's just me and you on the show. He goes, no, uh, uh, Chris Roach. I'm like, what? Because every dig I do out there, it's fucking Chris Roach to me. And this guy fucking kills. And he's he's exactly what they want. He's exactly what Long Island wants. From Long Island. Yeah. He's exactly what they fucking want. Kind so low I, brow, like a, just kidding. Yeah, like an idiot. He's a fucking, he's like a dumb, he's like a Long Island Randy Quaid. He's a fucking maroon. <laughs> But his jokes are funny, and he's a lovable fucking loser. Anyway, so, uh, and that's what they love. Kevin James, I mean, Kevin James might as well just walk by and trip. You know what I mean? That's how much, that's how much, that's how fucking much he delivers for them. So yeah. I say to, I say to, what's an ugly win out there, right? I say, so I say to, I say to Tim, I go, are you fucking kidding me? I go, even a five, I go, he, I, he goes, somebody canceled. I go, I go, is he the only comic on your fucking rotary phone? Like, yeah. what the fuck is wrong with you? So, so he you sh- on that list of the top 50 comics in Long Island. I think I was. He's, the, he's number one. He's the last. The, every, like no four. one, no one's better than him. So anyway, so I, I, so then we're, so then he shows up and Chris is like, he'd already done two episodes of, of uh, Kevin can wait. Yeah. It, it was coming out on Monday. Yeah. So then the feature, to him. Follow him. so I yeah. said, yeah, so I said, why don't you let him uh, close? He goes, I'm paying you more. I go, I go, I'll, I'll, I'll lower my fee. <laughs> I go, well, I'll, we all make the same money. I go, I'm not. But anyway, so then I, then he goes up, he goes, he goes, you guys heard about the show, Kevin can wait. And they're like, we can't wait. We all know somebody black. It's taped on Long Island. Oh, it is. So, so they're bringing him up to this. This is Tim selling the feature. Knowing the fucking headline is going to get buried. He's selling the fucking feature. He does like 25 kills. They're like fucking encore. Please don't leave. So he brings me up. Tim brings me up. Doesn't even do a lot of time. Brings me up. He goes, he goes, you know, the podcast misery loves company. Never heard of it. No one's ever heard of it. So a show that everyone's heard of. 
and a guy who does a great Long Island act. I love his act. I fucking got him trying to get him at cellar. He fucking botched it. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> he brings me up. You guys know that you guys, are you guys familiar with the Misery Loves Comedy? Nobody's familiar with it. I'm barely familiar with it. So I go up, I, you know, I rush it. I have to do like, you know, I have to do 40 and I end up, you know, I probably do like 35 because I'm, I'm not doing well. And then I get off and, uh, and you know, he's got a crowd around him. He's selling, you he don't have anything to sell. He's still selling stuff. They're like, can we buy the shirt you're wearing? <laughs> and you auction that off. Just so I go right to the green, I go right to the fucking green room at the fire station, which was like the fucking uh, fire chief's office. And uh, Tim goes, Tim, I'm just sitting there fucking fuming. <laughs> And Tim goes, that was good. I go, for who? Who was that good for? It was good for fucking, it was good for uh, Chris. Yeah. It's Chris. And then he goes, well, you know, you, you were the headline. He goes, you been, how long have you been doing this? I go, I go I'm going to fucking stab you. I go, you don't know how it works. It's one thing if a booker tells me how long you've been doing it. That's not how it works. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's his fucking home turf. That's a, That's why, why do, you think the, why do you think the home team usually wins the home games? Because yeah. they're comfortable. Yeah, but there's a lot of different ways to enjoy comedy. It's like maybe people were enjoying you, but they just weren't laughing as loud. It's like, yeah, it's were, like going to the cellar. Yeah, you're making like going think, to the cellar at the Vecchione. I can't believe you're like afraid of Mike Vecchione. Even though he's, I don't like to follow him. I don't like to follow anybody when he he's goes. Awesome. To, when Vecchione, when he's awesome. Vecchione great. has a strong set. It's not oh, he's, easy. He's great. Anyway, I wish Vecchione was here because then yeah, Vecchione could be like, bastard. no, I'm not. Vecchione's very humble too, which is annoying. <laughs> he, I mean, it's annoying, right? You, you, I mean, He's a good egg. Anyway, no, he's a good egg. Anyway, so it was it was inf it was infuriating. Like I would have I would have sucked my own dick to be in his shoes that night. You, you've already done two episodes. Probably mm -hmm. the first check you already probably cleared, and uh, it's coming out this Monday. And he's got a feature again. I'm like, isn't he ready to headline on his yeah. own fucking uh, island? Yeah. If he's got a if he's got a sitcom, let him headline. He goes he goes it wasn't booked that way. I'm like. I go, it doesn't matter. Nobody, you think people at the fires are going to get mad because we switched the order? Yeah. Because the better comic went on last? You would have featured and taken less money? Absolutely. I, I don't want to be humiliated. I have a family. Yeah. <laughs> and then I think somebody else gave me a ride home. I'm like, I'm like I, I should have just recorded that fucking ride home. <laughs> The whole time long, the, the whole way home, the guy was like, goes, so how the sh and I just kept yelling at fucking Crompier. <laughs> Like I was, I, maybe Crumpy I gave me a ride, but I was, I just kept yelling. I'm he like, give you right home. I'm like, are you a fucking like? Uh, yeah, he did. <laughs> I would have been even mad, madder at it, except his son, his, one of his kids was like, was sick, and I know how that's fucking. And then, then you don't give a shit about anything when your kid's sick. You're just like, I don't give a shit about you, Brandon, because my kid's sick. So, but it was dumb. It was just, it was dumb, and and I was fucking <laughs> furious. So, so, so that's Chris Roach. <laughs> hey. So anyway, so I was going to bring up the uh, hockey thing, you know, like like why or really it, it comes down to this. It's not so much hockey. It's more like why do black people always get in trouble? No, anyway. Right. <laughs> I have some theories about that. No, but like, <laughs> Chris, you're not going to get fired because I talk a lot. First of all, you know what? You Don't you listen to my show? Do you listen to any of my shows? I don't listen to anybody's show. You listen to Two Dope Kings? Cause that's no, a, I, I gotta be honest. Anthony's not here. I've I've never listened to his other show once. Which, what other show? What's the other show we had? Opie and Anthony. Yeah, I don't listen to. I don't listen to anything. Yeah, I'm not, I never. Shh, don't tell him that. Sometimes. Don't repeat that to him. I never listen to radio. Which is good, because if I listen to it, I'd be intimidated by him. Yeah. I can't like even like when I do scenes with people in, in, on TV. I don't. I never look up their resumes. I just can't. And I I shouldn't say this. I think I maybe watched maybe two King of Queens episodes. Three. Shh, don't. <laughs> oh my god are you are you on like some kind of <laughs> take your glasses off first of all are you kidding about the uh king of queens that's on every channel how do you not no, see I it just uh, i don't have you know, my wife started watching it when when we had our baby our first baby who's going to be eight or nine holy shit anyway do you listen to other podcasts i can't i don't have the attention span to listen to one time podcast. one time i um Howard Stern, I maybe listen to maybe. Three you might listen to Howard Stern. I'm like, wow, this guy's boring. Because I may go, listen to like in my life. People go, he's so great, and I listen. I go, I don't get it. So in I was life, listening maybe three hours of Howard Stern, and I was probably driving into the city. The other day, I was I was sitting at home, and I, I have a phone. So sometimes I'm looking at my phone, and then I and on my Twitter came up that uh, uh, you know what, dude, uh, Bobby Kelly's podcast was a. Uh, yeah, oh, it's a great podcast. So anyway, so I listen I'm do it I'm, all the time. I'm listening to it. I'm listening to it as I'm eating, and I and I fell asleep, and I um, and I land, and my head fell into my food. I'm kidding, really? but anyway. 
He, I like Bobby. He's a, he's a good guy. It's horrible. It's a fucking oh. horrible show. No, it's just, it's first of all, his, his show's three hours long. So if I, if I was doing a three-hour long show, when you do a oh. three-hour long show, you have to pace yourself. So Bobby starts out real slow, and then it gets, and then it slows down even from there. You know what I mean? It's like, it's just a lot of nothing. So so I when I try to listen to podcasts, I try to listen to Mark Maron's podcast, and he was interviewing uh, P. Corielli, right? So he said to P. Corielli, he goes, he writes for the show. I don't give a fuck. So he says to P. Corielli, he goes, he goes, Pete. So your dad was a. What'd your dad do again? I'm like, oh my god, I couldn't turn it off fast. I'm like, I don't give a fuck what P. Corielli's dad did. Like I don't give a shit where Pete Corelli like his upbringing on fucking uh, Long Island because they know he loves Billy Joel so he's a he's a Long Island hack yeah if you ask me Do you know he the, likes Billy Joel he's afraid of that fucking uh, that 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 house that was uh, haunted what's Avenue that Laura? House? huh what's that Avenue quote Laura. be the change yeah, he doesn't you go to Amityville the like all the obvious Long Nobody Island goes things to exactly everyone so that's what Pete Corelli's thing is. So he's like Pete, you know. I know Mark Maron. Mark Maron. That's so. I'm trying. I thought maybe if I, 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 he, I know the guy that he's interviewing, I'll be caught up in it. But I wasn't. So I don't listen to anything. Is it an old episode? Huh? Is it an old episode? I know it's free. <laughs> you uh, do you know that I have a podcast? What's it called? It's called uh, Not Another Puckin' Podcast, Comedians Oh, on yeah, you talk about hockey. It's Comedians on Hockey. So we got a couple of Ranger fans, a couple of Islander fans. We talk about comedy and hockey, but even... And how they're related? We have such a... Not. We have such a good time, but I, I can't listen to it. I can't listen to it. Oh, my God, that's that's not a good plug. I know, but I can't even listen to my own voice. It. I tape my set sometimes. I'm like, I'm like, I'm gonna listen to it. I'm like, I, I can't even. Where do you tape the podcast? In the on back. The island? They have a, a little, yeah. In the back of the governors, they have a radio room. And and who's on the show? Me, uh, John Trusen, Lori Pomentary. Oh, I know all those guys. Wait, Trusen's a hockey guy. Trusen's a big Ranger fan. And Lori's a hockey big person? Ranger fan. And Anthony D. Domenico, big Islander fan. And what are you? You're a Ranger, Ranger fan. Ranger fan. Right? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I always see you putting up that you're at the Ranger game. And oh they, man. They put you on the big screen. Since uh, since I got on Kevin's show, I, I've been getting these tickets through a publicist that are. In, I'm sitting behind the bench. I used to sit up in the blue in the rafters, blue seats. Yeah. Now I'm behind the bench, making faces at the uh, people, the guys on the you're other like team. right near the penalty box, and I you mean put right your there, face up against the glass. I was making a face at uh, this guy Radulov on the Canadians. I was making faces oh, at Radulov. Him. Yeah. And he gave me a look like he was annoyed and. <laughs> He gave me a look like he was annoyed. I'm like, yeah, maybe I shouldn't do that. I'll get thrown out of the game. You really are paranoid. Yeah, I met Mark Messier. You know how paranoid I am? I'm like, I was just in Omaha, and yeah. I think this could be a good, good bit. Your comedians. <laughs> somewhere in the air. Oh, my God. Why do you do your own bits? No, somewhere. You, you're done writing bits? That's funny? how big you are? Is this funny? I, I lost my Invisalign at the Omaha, Air, Omaha airport, and I'm so This is how paranoid I am. I think somebody's going to find them. Mold my teeth and like stop stop biting hookers on the ass or something like that, and I'm gonna get in trouble because they're gonna find out my teeth are on people's asses. No, I don't think that'll happen. No. What's the Visalign? Well, What's the Visalign? Visalign, they're like yeah, plastic. Like the, the that's what I think. I think somebody's gonna mold my teeth. Somebody's gonna find them. No, that's just because you because you because things are going good, so you're extra paranoid. Yes, yeah. yes. And you're like women are being nice. Sometimes women like are, are nice to me. I'm like, ah, oh, you just wanna get pregnant and have a baby in case I can make it. Is your wife having sex with you more? No. How about she having sex with anybody else more? Not that I know of. <laughs> How about Kevin James? Would you let your wife? Is a total uh, hypothetical. Would you let your wife? Here comes a loose. Here comes Kevin a here comes a lose lose question for me. Would you let your wife fuck Kevin James to get more to get more airtime? <laughs> Kevin James, he how many wives is what why what number is he on wife wise? I, I, I only know the one. You can fuck my girlfriend if you talk to Esty for me. Done. All right, thanks. Want me to do anything for you? Nice you to tell Esty I'm on the show. Now. I did. No, I I said to I asked Liz. I go, Liz, what should should I what should I do? She's, Who? She's the general manager. Okay. She used to be on my podcast. What'd she say? She said, um, yeah, it's something to think about. <laughs> That's a step in the right direction. Don't do your fucking umbrella bit, man. What I won't are you do doing? It. I, don't know. I thought it was funny. And then I saw you. I saw you. I, I, it really happened to me, though. Somebody hit me with an oversized umbrella. Nobody gives a shit. First of all, you're a big dude. Talk about how you're a big dude. Okay. I, don't talk about how, like, don't talk about how, first of all, that's a small room. So you got to address how big you are. So, and then, and then talk about how you're shitting, whatever. 
how you got to change the sheets, that that joke oh, or whatever. I got sick. Well, yeah, just juicing. just make it seem yeah, make you seem like like you're not a big you know. Whatever. Yeah, I gotta. I know. I definitely. I need to get in the city. Because oh, Mike, uh, and then I saw Mike's. Uh, I saw your Conan. Did I already tell you that when I saw your Conan day? You did a Conan set? It was really yeah. good. No, I saw his first. Me too. Nice brother. Very nice. And he's not in the cellar with two Conan sets. I'll get and there. I eventually. saw his Conan set. I saw his Conan set. I'm like, I don't know why they just didn't do that because Esty would have definitely passed him. I thought, you know, but here's the thing. Here's the thing, Esty. Because I opened with a Mrs. Doubtfire joke. Nobody cares. Should not be like a. No, be Esty, a don't give you, Esty don't give you ten minutes. She gives you two jokes. Yeah. So if the first joke doesn't work, she, it's not good. If the if the se, if the second joke doesn't work and it's not funny to her, you're done. Because she's like, I got no time. I got no time for this shit. So if she, if you can't do, if you're in your, if your second joke is not either funny to her or funny to the crowd, you're basically it's all over. And, but she'll take you back now because, you know, have your, uh, can you have anybody call? How about, yeah. how about, uh, how about that other guy? Who? Adam Ferrara. Yeah, he might, he call for me. Yeah, because she likes Adam Ferrara. She, don't... she loves Kevin James. You guys want to themselves? Huh? Let's all. I can't because I got two shows. He's got two Conan sets and he's not in a cellar. I don't. I don't get it. He's doing fine. He's doing fine. Don't worry about him. Worry about yourself. Later. I'm gonna watch him later. Um, no, it's a, it's just the thing is you gotta you gotta listen to me. People don't listen to me. Did, who? And then Michael Che got you the spot. Yeah. Did he tell you what jokes to do? No. Michael Che well, got you the spot. Don't, don't don't fucking recommend somebody. It's the same with Tim Dillon. Like Bobby Kelly got him in and he doesn't tell him what to do. Just tell him what to do. You, you I don't know his, I don't know Tim Dillon's act. I said start out strong. Che just doesn't have to give a shit huh? about Che doesn't have to give a shit about anybody or anything. It's like you know, but he then can't don't be bother don't, with anything. But don't recommend you then. And who's gonna recommend me? Because Joe's tried a couple times, Joe but who? Colin Jost. But it didn't really work. He said he first of all he lied. He didn't he didn't say okay. you you saw the text? Yeah. You saw the text to Esty? Yeah. What did it say? Mike Racine's really funny. Uh, you know? That's it? You just take a look at him. Yeah. Bobby Collins said he was going to call her. He, he, <laughs> I see don't even like him. Really? It seems like they're good friends. We're bumming out your listeners. Why? It's all about how we failed. <laughs> this is what the show is. Yeah. <laughs> because no one listens to my yeah. show. I I, the other go, week I couldn't oh, get it up. He Burning went, Bridges is the name of the show? Yeah. Oh, man. No, but I like how people go like, what, what's this show? I go, this is the show. <laughs> this is the show. Is the show. In fact, if you guys want to leave, I'd like to be alone. <laughs> <laughs> the, first, the first week we... He just puts a bag over his head. You know, the first week we were here, uh, um, what's him call it? Uh, Tom, Comedy Tom, what's his name? Tom Cassidy. Yeah, Tom Cassidy. Yeah. Because Jimmy Martinez couldn't go. You know Jimmy Martinez? Oh, yeah, I know Jimmy, yeah. Anyway, Tom, Jimmy canceled because he got a problem with his tooth. And because it was like a black problem. Was he in a movie? You know what I mean? No, because he was eating some pussy like at three in the morning, and his and his molar broke. Wow. No, he was like literally eating. He said he was eating at the pancake house three in the morning, and he broke his tooth. He had to go. Whatever. Anyway, so Tom was here by himself, and then he goes, uh, "I was giving Tom a hard time because he was he's a stiff, you know." <laughs> I've seen Jimmy at a, at a. So I he was I I said basically called him a stiff. So he goes I'm leaving. So then he got up to leave and I, and he didn't leave. But as he's about to leave, I was panicking because I'm like, holy shit, it's my first show, and the guy's leaving. So that would be bad. Anyway. Oh, well, I saw Jimmy at a comedy club and uh, he had an assistant with him, and he kept, and he said to the people there, he goes, my, my assistant's got to come to the back with me. And I was like, I want an assistant. That's why I, I want to make it. Hey, what year was that? Jimmy had an Jimmy Martinez. An assistant with him that was like uh, over Jimmy the, Martinez over the too. winter. I, he was at, he was doing an urban show on Long Island. He's a big dude. Yeah, didn't he play like Suge Knight in a movie? He should. I think he played he played Suge Knight in a movie. But he had an assistant with him, and I, I, I when I saw him, I'm like I want an assistant. But what was the assistant for? I don't know. Yeah, what do you need an assistant? The for? assistant the assistant brought him a drink. Go to Long Island. The assistant went to, and got him a drink. I'm like I want an assistant. I'm gonna get an intern. Somebody just volunteered with my intern. I don't know. But you don't pay interns, right? Not in this country. <laughs> All right. So, what do you you got? You got you, anything you want to talk about? Uh, how about you know? I, I was funny. I was thinking about you on the way in because uh, uh, when I come into the city, like everybody tells me, what's such a night? You got a, you got a phone call? You have, have a phone, phone call? He's, Who is it? They hung it? up. Go ahead, caller. Hey, buddy. 
What are you doing? Hey, it's Gino. Look, I rented a van. I'm driving around Midtown picking up guests for you. We just got to some sunglasses for everybody. Gino, where'd you get that picture of you at the beach? I'm picking up guests. Those are nice glasses. No, those are. You saying my glasses are nice? What? Because they're orange? Those glasses. Gino, you hung up already? Wait, no, I'm right there. I'm sorry, I had you on Bluetooth. What happened? Bluetooth. Wait, uh, uh, tell him about well, the I was show. I on hold so goddamn long. I had to go hands free. I'm using my hands here, buddy. Tell him about the show Thursday night. <laughs> it was fantastic. Oh, like they, it was the first time the Belmore governors ever installed seatbelts on the chairs. That's how crazy <laughs> things got. Oh, you got right. You're it was off the hizzy. It's called the brokerage. <laughs> Where do you Whatever. stay? Whatever. No, Gino gets a lot of fights with uh, fans from one of the old. Uh, uh, can you say the name, Gino? I'm not going to say it. Uh, Red. Anyway, he fights. Whoa. There was a show that used to be here. Gino gets in a lot of fights with them. So yeah, they were there weren't any Gino. of them there on Thursday night, right? But I want to apologize, Gino, because uh, I, I think I was the one who said, made a joke about you having a lot of roommates. No, see, I talk about it in my act and stuff. They're, they're, it, it just shows how dumb they are. They're like, oh, he's got a lot of roommates. He's broke. No, that's really not it. <laughs> he's but just an alcoholic, well, why, and this makes his life easier. But do you talk about it on your, uh, on your podcast? Yeah, I've mentioned it on several uh, uh, instances. No, because I thought I was the one who outed it, and then, and then people were like, uh, you know, and then I kind of felt bad because they seemed like you're getting a lot of shit on Twitter, on the Twitter. No, it just it just shows how unoriginal they are because I talk about it. You have to you have to watch the show once and just realize how the guy is so fucking boring and unentertaining, and he just who is makes it? shit up as you go. Who right? Right? You know what? And and you know what? And he uh, he he probably uh, doesn't have to ask people to to meet him in Times Square for a show. What happened to all your guests, buddy? Oh, canceled. It's called fight. That's why I hate doing fucking podcasts. You're always at the mercy. <laughs> Of people, because nobody wants to do you a podcast. Think, Everybody has their own podcast. The karma train, because you made fun of me when you first started saying I wasn't at the studio, and now the universe is, is holding people back from your studio? Or maybe they fuck. just thought Jimmy Martinez was there and he was going to eat them with his crooked tooth. You think that might have been something? <laughs> I don't know. What, he, what did you say? <laughs> what did you just say? Nothing. First of all, has Red Bar what? ever seen your, your orange glasses, your orange rim uh, sunglasses? My I, my orange. I was gonna Skype in so you could see my sunglasses. I, I never to say anything. But I, I never say anything. dope, but those have, sunglasses. I don't actually have good Skype, as you recall. Those sunglasses are very dope. Are they Oakley? Huh? Are they Oakleys? The ones I wear. Charles Oakley. No, they're. I think they're called Studio. I got them at some snowboard place in Park City. All right, hang up on them. Anyway, <laughs> uh, believe it or not, they were not expensive. <laughs> Park City. That's the that's the code today for hang up. Park City. <laughs> I tell your buddy, All you right, guys, buddy. are you and Aaron in a car together? You guys are always together, right? Yeah, we hang out with Aaron. Oh, big teaser for tomorrow. Aaron may, may or may not have purchased a car. What? <laughs> yeah, that's right, buddy. That's going to be an unbelievable episode. Apple? What's that? You guys are jumping the shark with this episode. <laughs> All this right, buddy. I was just calling in because I always watch. You're the this man, is buddy. Be killer. Gino, I love you. Oh, you hung up. Anyway. Do you know you guys know Gino? Yeah, no, I don't know him though. No. Gino Bisconti. I know who he is, but I never met him though. No. I never met him until I started working here. I wish I never started working here. That's my point. Anyway, so you guys got anything you want to? You want to? Anything yes. you want to plug? Oh, you mean like dates or like things we no. want to talk about? Yeah, things you want to talk about? Yeah, this because you know I realize when I, I come into the city for auditions, like I'm a very I have a long fuse. Everybody's like, oh, you're such a nice guy, but when I come into the city, things piss me off, and that's why I started tweeting. I'm feeling Kevin Brennan. Oh yeah, that's your new hook, right? That's my new hook, like uh, I thought that... you listened to my podcast. That's how you knew I was like a no. hothead. No, I just I just know you're a hothead, but uh, I never even flip out on Long Island. Listen, my parents met in the Bronx. Uh, we we grew, I grew up in Queens. They moved us out to Long Island, uh, Ronkonkoma. But you know, I'm not like a hardcore New Yorker. But there are things that piss me off. Like, I'm not from Brooklyn, but there are things that people do in the city that piss me off so bad. And it's like when somebody comes here from, moves here from Pennsylvania, and they start riding a skateboard in the freaking street. Like, when people come to the city, and they start treating it like a playground. Yeah. Doing the skateboard in the street, and I, I just want to beat the sh shit out of them. I'm sorry. It bothers me.
Are you apologizing to? Right. The city bikes too. I see. You act like all these guys are skateboarding through the fucking studio. You ever see people skating? Wait, I, I want to. I want to stop. What street are you? Are they skateboarding? Seventh Avenue. I want to stop and say, dude, where do you live? Pennsylvania. Go back to Pennsylvania. And and why do you think he's from there? Pennsylvania? I don't know because they come here and they think it's a playground. It's not a playground. It's, it's a yeah, city. I think those are skaters. Those are guys who live in Brooklyn. They think they skate over the bridge and they want to look cool. So they have a fucking. They have a hacky sack. They have a fucking skate. One time I saw a lady on a scooter uh, call a guy the N word. It was it was really funny. Also. All right. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. What? What? Wait, wait, wait. A scoot, a lady on a scooter, like a what kind of a scooter? Yeah, like a razor scooter. She was scooting by and she was calling some guy. <laughs> wait, so <laughs> she was on an electrical scooter, like? No, it was like a ra- like a foot, like a razor scooter. Oh, yeah. why'd you call the guy the M word? I don't know. I guess he was in her way. Oh, that's cool. Like you do, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I I was at Seven Eleven for real. I saw a guy on one leg, and on the one leg he had a um, skateboard. No, <laughs> he had a he had a roller. He was rollerblading. See. That's another thing. I mean, people how, rollerblading on the fake leg. Uh, on the fake leg? No, on his good leg. On his good leg, he had one leg. Are you yelling at me? Huh? Why are you yelling at me? He had one leg, and he's rolling. He has the one good leg. He had puts wheels on it. Like it makes no sense. I mean, he had uh, he had the fucking he had the two braces you see the to balance them. But but what is he? And I, I couldn't help but think maybe he fucked up the first leg that way. You know what I mean? You know, you see a lot too that annoys me. People that sing out loud. I mean, they sing out really loud, like you know, like so they they want to draw attention to, them, to themselves, so they yeah. sing out like oh, no, like 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 they don't have a care, they don't have a care in the world. Just go in your bathroom and sing. Do you ever notice thing. how you drive on a parkway, but then you park <laughs> on a driveway? Wait, whose bit is that? George Carlin? I think it's uh, Stephen Wright, maybe. Is it? Somebody. Listen, yeah. I'll, I don't I'll know, tell you this. Am I being silly? Those the things annoy me. I don't know. No, I, that's what we want. We want you to like air out your bad bit. Thank you. You notice how like black people and white people are like different? No, but for real, I was gonna bring that up. When you, you ever you ever take the train, like when I take the train in New Jersey or whatever, when someone's phone, like when their phone works and they listen to it without headphones on, oh, it's God. always a black dude because they know you're not gonna do anything. It's for a t- you can't. What can you say? You go, I go, like the other day it was a, a drunk white guy. He got on the train and he goes, uh, he's listening to it loud. So I go, yo, oh, it was that Long Island Railroad? I think we were going out or uh, whatever. I go, yo, we can hear that. So he goes, oh. So then the, the couple in front of him, yeah, I was coming home. The couple in front of him go, thank you. Yeah. Because they, they couldn't do it because yeah. they couldn't see if he was black or not. They didn't want to turn around. <laughs> so they didn't turn around. So so I knew he wasn't. But if he was black, I would just switch cars because you can't say anything. Yeah, there's really nothing dude. you can say. Yeah, You can't say anything because then he'll go, it's because I'm black. I go, no, because you notice nobody else is playing. How about if everybody had their phone going? And then we just sit there and we just it just con- just constant fucking noise pollution. Yeah. But the black guys know you're not going to do anything. I have a bit about like, like, what, like huh? I got my what? CBS glasses on. Sensor. Your glasses do not fit your head. Your glasses you are real. Don't head. They don't fit my head. <laughs> is that how you got Kevin Kawhi? You showed up with your fucking stupid glasses. You look like you're slow. You look like you're really fucking. You know, I played a mental patient on a soap opera. I totally believe it. I so did. what were you saying? Just the thing with those interactions is you're always going to sound like such a nerd when you have them. So you're what not you going to win. What when you mean? go, excuse me, sir, would you mind turning that down? You're just going to sound. No, I look corny. like a fucking complete dick because I got I got hate in my eyes. Yeah. So <laughs> you're in your soul. So if they see if they see my eyes, then they go, oh, this motherfucker wants some. And I don't want some. I just want them to turn the fucking music down. Plus, I know they're playing the game. It's like the N-word. Like, they say the N-word because they know you can't say it. And you know you can't say, don't say it. Mm-hmm. Like, when they say it in front of my kids on a train, I go, I go, uh, don't say it. Mm-hmm. I can't say I can't even look at them. So I, we just got to wait till, you know, those, you know, what's get off the fucking train. React, Chris. Hey, uh, so... No, but so you can't... It is frustrating. It is yeah. frustrating. Being a white guy sucks. I have a bit about having an app like Uber where every time you have to confront somebody, like a, a black lady can come and do it for you. Okay, do it. No. Why? I'm doing my bits on your show, on your Why? podcast. No one's they've been listening. What? I'm not going to do my... Do one. Just do one. It's funny. I'll give you a dollar. No. You won't do it because... Why would I do my bits on what your What would you show? call the app? What would you call the app? Come on. Excuse me. 
Is that for real? Is yeah. That, is that in the bit? Yeah. We need yeah. some better. We're getting it out of us. <laughs> I can't believe you guy won't do a bit on a fucking show. Well, you won't do it because it's disrespectful? I'll do a bit. I'll do a bit. All right, do one of yours. I used to do a bit. Everybody always brings this up because I, I can't. Well, anyway, I used to say when I lived in Queens, Long Island City, Queens, I go, I live in Queens. They're selling crack in my neighborhood, finally. <laughs> because it was like a joke. You know why it was yeah, a joke? Yeah. Because we got everything later. Right. We got everything later. Like when when we didn't get cable, people are like, "Did you see that video?" I go, "No." Was it a Greek video of a Greek lady? Because I lived in a story. It was all Greek people. Do people relate to that if they don't live in Queens? Yeah, they loved it because yeah. it was like we got there's something crack in my neighborhood finally. So it was like we finally got. I remember you doing that. Yeah. Do yeah. do do do. It wouldn't even work. The strip. It even work on Long Island because they they don't they didn't they didn't. What about that gang in Islip? Oh, like really the MS-13, forget it. Yeah, but what they, if they, everybody knows about it, why don't the cops fucking take, get rid of them? Try it, that's bad. Lumi was talking about it, or, or oh Keith was talking uh, about yeah, it. It's... No, if, they, if, if you were a cop and everybody knew where this gang was and lived, wouldn't you just go there? Everybody knows they're in Islip. Where's Islip, like the worst part of a... Islip? I, you know, it's like any town on Long Island, like there's a good part, and then all of a sudden you turn the corner, and you're like, oh my God. Really? It's like a bad part. Even where even where Mike from Cecil lives, where does he live? I don't know. Bill O'Reilly lives out there too. I know he lives there, and I'm sure there's not a oh. bad part where Mike Francis. Oh, lives. maybe those certain towns. First like time North I saw Shore, Kevin, North Shore. He he, he was I on stage know. at the I don't strip. Know where he lives. First time I saw Kevin, he was on stage at the strip, and he looks at these two girls, and he goes, "How you doing, ladies? You stupid whores!" And he's like, "No, it's a hip hop thing. It's a hip hop thing." <laughs> I go, "What's that? Oh, did I? <laughs> yeah, you stupid whores. Well, I don't <laughs> even work there anymore. Voluminous." No, it's a hit. You know what I would do? You know what I'd do? I would go, uh, is when I was like done at that club, because that club is a real fucking, it's a real downer. Disaster, yeah. No, because you go there and it's like the fucking, the people that, the people that work there, they don't even, they still work there from 20 years ago and they don't have to. I'm like, is this the only fucking bar in town? Get another fuck, get a real job where people show up and give. Like, I don't need this. I used to be hot. The Who books you did? that? She said that? Oh, probably. Oh. Who books that? I like when they define it. You're wrong, sir. One time I was doing, talking about, uh, What's the uh, Kardashian? I like when you talk about the Kim Volumen. Kardashian. I, I go, I go, Kim Kardashian. I go, Kim Kardashian. I go, she, I would say something about her, and the, these girls in the audience go, "You're jealous." I go, "How am I jealous of Kim Kardashian?" Like, no, because she's hot. I go, "I don't want to be hot." Am I right or no? Anyway, twice at the twice at the comic strip, um, I just couldn't take it, so I just I just walked off stage, and you know you have to walk kind of through that little. Like where the where yeah. the sound booth is, so you walk back there. I just I just said, all right, I'm done. No, because they ever go, what's what they one? I think one group they go, what's wrong with you? I go, yeah, what is wrong with me? So I just I just walked up. <laughs> <laughs> That's gangster. So then um so then the MC is like out at the bar watching TV and he's like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so he has to go running back in. No, because yeah, it's like you reach a point where you don't want to work there, and like in this way, you don't have to worry about putting in if they just go like you're not welcome here anymore. Plus, the club sucks. Yeah, the club sucks a bag of dicks. And the, another thing is, when the club sucks, the audience knows it. The audience knows it. The, the, the audience they heckle the comics, and nobody does anything. They know when the vibe is bad. They know, and they know if they go to a comedy club in New York and there's 12 people. They know it's not a happening club, so so they 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 take it out on you sometimes. They like they made a bad choice, and then they then they think you suck because you're there, and maybe you do. Yeah. You suck because you're there. So then they think I suck, and and I was like, fuck this, I don't even want to fucking work there. What do you got on that, Chris? Yeah. Uh, has your road money picked up since you got on Kevin Can Wait? Yes, it has. Like doubled. Pretty close. I mean, I what? Get, I mean, what are you making for you? Well, listen, double. I'm still making ends meet. No, you know what? I, 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 no, I wouldn't say you don't even have any kids. How are you making ends meet on Long Island? You I, could be a fucking. You worked at the. You were general manager of a fucking uh, porno store. Adult you made entertainment ends, store. You made ends meet with that job, so you're not making ends meet. It's like how it okay. picks up the mic like an old fashioned fucking. So you know. Before the show, I was like only doing like tri-state area work, and then I got the show. And the, they know you on the road. It's something out of a movie. You just being like, "Yeah, what is wrong with me?" And you hang up the mic and walk out. What is wrong with me? <laughs> Wait. At one they... of those moments, you start crying, and then you walk off stage. Do they know who you are. Who's that? When I go out? Yeah. Some some people come out from the show, but like before the show, I was really only getting booked like say tri-state. Yeah, you're getting booked, yeah, wherever I was. You yeah, wherever you were, I made sure I get in, in front of you. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, you read you read brokerage like every time I was there. So I'm like, yeah, it's it's my another place to work. <laughs> no, it's fucking annoying. But now I'm going on planes, and I, I really never flew much in my life. So that's, that's, are you serious? Yeah, I flew like maybe three times in my life, and like in the last like five months, I flew you on like business four times. You on business class? I gotta get. I gotta. I try to book in advance because you're too my, big for a regular seat. Yeah, right? I gotta get the extra legroom seats. Exit that, row. Exit row. Yeah. Now, but that, do they charge you more? Yeah. Well, that's that's it's the good thing and the bad thing. The bad thing is they charge you, but the good thing is a lot of people don't want to pay it, so it's, no one's sitting next to me a lot. Oh right. So that's right. good. So you get recognized when you're at the airport? No, nah, not really. <laughs> I don't get recognized that much at all. And that's yeah, that's fucked up. Because a lot of people watch the show, right? A lot of people watch America's it, but you know what? There's a show. Yeah, but there's a million channels on TV now. You got Netflix. No. I know. It's not like the '80s where if you had if you on one episode, people. You know what they should do? Kevin James should do a Netflix special because the Netflix people. He's doing one, not, huh? He's doing one in October. Well, that's too late. Comedy. He's doing a stand-up special in October. For, for Netflix. Huh? Okay, well that's good because the net then the Netflix people they probably not even aware that you know what I mean. Well, people are aware, but. People see him as like a kind of an old-fashioned kind of trip over the furniture kind of, because that's what he does. But anyway, no, every every clip is like him tripping over the, like he's Dick Van Dyke. You know who Dick Van Dyke is? Sure do. Okay, anyway, <laughs> he was a comedy lesbian. college. No, but anyway, so it'd be if he was seemed hipper, it would be better for it would be better for that, right? Wouldn't it be better if he seemed a little bit like because his his comedy's not he's he's a funny guy it's not corny comedy he's a funny guy and i i i, I worked to make you laugh off the off the off uh when you're not shooting everything i don't talk to him much when i'm shooting but when i opened him for him on the road i was surprised i said you open for him um why are you holding on to this story why don't you open with this why this, sound, this is gonna sound like it's got some gold in it no i was surprised when i when i worked with him i said i didn't realize you had that much material yeah, like he's got like a special right here, like funny stuff too. Yeah. And for him, I thought it was kind of edgy some of the things he was talking about. Yeah. Does he write it himself or does he have people help? He him? writes himself, but also, you know, he's got his Rock Rubin is his number one guy, helps him yeah, too. Rock Rubin, he's a, he's he's a, a good machine, guy. that guy. Yeah, he's, a, he's got a good name too, Rock Rubin. Could you yeah. imagine how far you would go if your name was Rock Rubin? Rock Rubin? Yeah, that's his real name, Rock Rubin, right? Rock, uh, it's, I think his real name is Michael, but they call him Rock. Yeah, yeah Rock's better. It's like a wrestler. But to have, you know, I, I want I want a rock Ruben. That guy is just like you know. They started together. They grew up together through the business. And you have one. It's called Tim Crompier. That's true. Yeah. Stop getting down on yourself. You're doing great. Oh, thanks, man. You, you got to You got Yeah. The grass is always greener. You want a yeah. rock Ruben, and you got you like got, Kevin Brennan's life. Yeah. <laughs> you got John Trusen. Yeah, Kevin works at the cellar. You know. <laughs> yeah. The grass is always greener. You got. I want out of the cellar so bad. I'm. I'm gonna fucking. I'm gonna do something desperate soon. No, but you got you got John Trusen, you got fucking uh, Rock, you got Tim Crompier, you got Lori, you got everyone's right there waiting for you. You should get an intern. Are you gonna have a family now that you're what? making some money? No, my wife and I were both in our forties. What? I have a kid through another relationship. Oh yeah. Son, What's yeah. up? What's up? <laughs> Wait, is she? Who's the, who's? The, oh yeah, your son's old, right? Twenty six. Yeah. You doing stand up. You know what he did when he was younger? He was doing stand up, but now he's in like uh, like this progressive uh, heavy metal band. Oh, that sounds like a real good market. Anyway. Yeah, well, well he's enjoying himself. Of course he is. He's 26. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's a fucking band that's going nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> progressive heavy metal? Well, it's like progressive, like progressive politically? I don't know. I think, I think progressive the lyrics means are they, sensitive. It just changes as it goes like along. Christian rock, where it's like Christian lyrics, but the, the music's hard. Is it like that? Speaking of, you know, I just got dissed by recently. Speaking of Christian rock, Scott Stapp dissed me. Do you know who Scott Stapp is? Uh, do you know him? Yeah, he's for, uh, the guy from Creed. Creed. Oh, that guy. What so, did he do? I was at this pink tie event on Long Island. What? A pink tie. It's like a, a, to raise money for cancer. But That's <laughs> no, it was it was huge. Even Somebody, if it is helping people, it does sound real gay. It was yeah. you know media. Who was there. the keynote speaker? Was it Harrison Greenbaum? <laughs> no, it was like a uh, it was a big event where all these like, Harrison. By the way, sorry to cut you off, but Harrison, no disrespect. You know I love you, but seriously, that's not cool to cancel in the middle of the night. Because you know, I mean, luckily I killed that night. But what if I don't kill? Yeah. What if I'm in a funk? What if I'm in a funk? <laughs> What if I'm in a funk and I'm on the fucking train home? I got a fucking, I got a grocery bags because I got a fucking shop for my kids 
because uh, my wife has to work the next day and I, I can't go shopping during the day because they won't let me because they're fucking cock blockers when I'm shopping. They just want me to buy cookies. I get it. I, everybody likes cookies, especially kids. So I got to shop. I got to go shopping after I do sets. I'm, I'm, I'm like the fucking guy who's get the, got to get beat up on the train because I got groceries at night. Who am I dealing with on the train? Just Jimmy Martinez's. You know what I mean? Who, are, who want my food and my money. They know I have some money because I have food with me. You know what I mean? So then, uh, so then I get this in the middle of the night. Like, I can't do the show Monday. And I was like, don't worry. I'm not worried because I got Tim Dillon and I got Comedy Go with Chris Roach from the sitcom uh, uh, Two Raymonds. What's it called? Kevin Can Wait. Kevin Can Wait. Anyway, uh, so. Two Raymonds. <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's not cool. It's not cool. But that's the thing about podcasts. You, you, right? You had a podcast and people, and you just stopped doing it, right? Because people. Yeah. Can't get any guests. Well, and it's hard to get people together and stuff. And yeah, I'm trying to do another one. It's like a nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. Are you trying and it's just, you can't get it off the ground? I'm recording another one tonight. I recorded People really one listen to these things, though? Yeah. Huh? People really listen to yeah, these people things? Yeah, people listen. People need stuff to listen to. Somebody said it's. People in the booth go, no. <laughs> Yeah. This one. I can't even find this show on uh, iTunes or anything. It's not the show? On, right? Yeah, it's, on, uh, it's behind a network. fucking paywall. Oh. <laughs> Somebody think it's free? No. You think this shit is free? You think this gold is free? No, it's not. Also, people, while we're on a subject, I have another show still called Misery Loves Company. I can't believe I fucking... That's the show I thought I was going to be on. Yeah! Anyway, uh... It's just bullshit. So Misery Loves Company, uh, people give me, you know, because now I don't have a co-host, you know? And now now I'm glad I don't have co-hosts, because I, I fucking co-hosts suck. I thought yeah. Carabas was your co-host. Uh, Wasn't Carrie Carabas? No, she was co-host for a couple of weeks, and then uh, she, wore out her, she wore out her welcome. The point is that, you know, people are like, well, what happened to... What happened to Lenny? What happened to... What happened to Jimmy Martinez? Why, people are like, you can't, Jimmy Martinez, that's comedy gold. You, you got no show without him. I'm like, okay, whatever. They quit. They quit. You then I, assistant. Then I, so I've been using but Tom Cassidy. Florentine. Tom Cassidy. Listen. What about this guy? Nice guy, but he should be fucking, he should be fucking collating something. Anyway, so, uh, so uh, you know, I'm at, uh, the last week, Jim Florentine. Jim Florentine brought his son because he was, he had to watch his son. People go, you know, you should have Florentine and his son more often. I'm like, should I? Should I? For a fucking... And I like when they give me suggestions yeah. for a free show. It's a fucking free show, and I'm supposed to do what you tell me? Yeah. You know what? I'm a grown man, okay? I don't have time... You are a grown man. I don't have time for, like, your fucking... You know what you should do? You should do this. I'm like, give me a, give me money. I actually tweeted that the other night. I go, I go, thanks for all your suggestions. Some good, some bad. Here's a suggestion for you, you cunts. Donate. <laughs> no, seriously, I'm a grown fucking man. I, I'm not... How old are you, uh, Mike? Be thirty in like a week. Thirty. So he he's got a, not a care in the world. He he fucking cooks for his wife. Nice. He cooks Italian meals for his wife. He doesn't. I, I wouldn't even. <laughs> I don't want. I would love to be able to do that, but I didn't learn. I didn't know I was going to be a comedian. I would have learned some skills. I would have learned some. I would have taken some cooking classes. Cook for the guys, and you could become a fireman and then cook for them. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't work out, right? Don't the firemen they're always cooking? They're always one cooking. Guy's always oh, a cook. the fireman? Yeah. No, no, but they do cook. No, there was one guy who always cooks. So, yeah. so you could you wouldn't have to go to the fires. You just cook, just cook the lasagna, yeah. and then there, all the men come back. You'll be the taking, men. with your apron. Your <laughs> you and Harrison Greenback could put out a nice spread, and then you guys could all lick each. No, but the point is that people like give me a lot of suggestions. I'm like, listen, motherfuckers. Like, at least here I get paid. Like, not a fortune, but at least so people go, oh, you know. I go, yeah, I'm getting paid. But the other show, when they give me suggestions, I'm like, I've had it. I fucking had it. You know what I mean? Because it's yeah. just, it's just exhausting. It's hard to do two shows anyway. And then they go like, you know what you should do? I go, you know what you should do? You fucking asshole. So I'm basically yeah. telling, I'm telling people. I don't even know I'm telling these people because these people pay for the show, and the other people are like, you know. I, uh, Back to you, Chris. Okay, in the news today. Uh, yeah. So you should be. You should. You should definitely be a weatherman. So stop uh, riding skateboards. Sounds like visiting your grandfather in a nursing home. <laughs> what? <if it's> my... <laughs> well, wouldn't you be a good you know weatherman? I had a. Uh, uh, you got a cold front. On Long Island last night, they did a, a roast for me at the comedy club. They did. Yeah. It was, you tell me. I should have told you. Everybody got drunk. It was really nice, but somebody. My father was in. Somebody. Was Kevin James there. No. Who was show. there from the show? Uh, Enzo, Joe Star. <laughs> he was the host, but look at this. Look at this. You could do the green screen. Yeah. And then we got a okay. In uh, in Poughkeepsie, it's a wow. The weather is all screwed up in Poughkeepsie. You see right now. No, and, but you uh, know why you're good at that? Because you have a very calm demeanor. 
And then you could do, and then you could do your thing about like how hey, what's with the skateboards? What's with the skateboards in Manhattan? I think if you have a skateboard in Manhattan, no, 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 just that, just uh, just that, just go. What's with the skateboards in Manhattan? And then go, let's, and then point to the cold front. You know what I mean? What's with the skateboards in Poughkeepsie? No, because nobody cares about skateboards in Poughkeepsie. In nobody lives there. I'm saying skateboards in Manhattan, but you don't have you, know, you don't have a bit. You just bring up you just bring up setups. What's with the skateboard in Manhattan? What's what people text me while they're driving? By the way, that umbrella. Uh, you just bit you introduce I did, yeah the umbrella bit I did at the cellar really happened. Somebody it, and nobody it, cares. Well, you know what? Louis, Louis C.K. closed. He did his SNL opening. It was a complete made up scenario. Nobody gives a fuck if it happened or not. Does anybody who lives in Manhattan? Do you see the go when somebody brings a golf umbrella into the city? That doesn't piss you off that they're taking up a whole. No, sidewalk? why should it piss me off? They were smart. They bring a big, sturdy fucking umbrella. When it I is, it's because it's at eye level that's why it's a tall person thing when i bring a big when it's raining i bring a, i bring the biggest umbrella i can find because i buy a big one because i i just base i pretend like i don't see anybody your shoes get wet huh? it's selfish i think wet. it's a little selfish that's all the umbrella is too small everything gets wet and then the thing breaks so i'm saying you you get a big umbrella when you're on a skateboard <laughs> <laughs> I'm really that pissed. That if you off. see somebody with a big umbrella on a skateboard, and they're singing out loud, and at, they're singing out loud, I'll I'll you just have a meltdown. I'll freak, the, I'll freak no, out. When I when I was raining, I big I get a big umbrella because then I just walk down the street and everyone has to fucking move away. All the three dollar umbrellas, they have to fucking concede mm -hmm. to me. You never saw anybody walking down the street singing out loud and like, why, why are you doing that? Drawing a little attention. I do that to yourself. all the time now because. <laughs> <that's, laughs> I'm like, shut this. Is it Manhattan? Yeah. Everyone thinks they're talented. They don't do that in Ronkonkoma. Yeah, because everybody knows who they, there's, there's no anonymity. Is that a town in Long Island, anonymity? Yeah, the conk. Oh, anonymity. anonymity is next to Amityville. There's no, there's, there's no, uh, there's no anonymity in Long Island because if you're in your town, you're singing, people, people will call your mom. Oh, they call the cops. Am I right? Here, you can do whatever the fuck you want. That's why. You can take a shit on the on the on a fucking it's, fire hydrant. It's not a playground. Nobody cares. Go back yeah. to the cops Connecticut. Cops help you, huh? Go back to Connecticut. It's they're not. not a they're playground. they're hipsters from Brooklyn. Mike, you live in Brooklyn. They're not right? from Brooklyn. Yeah. They're living in Brooklyn. A lot, a lot of guys Brooklyn. are skateboarding, right? Yeah, good amount. Yeah, because they try. That's how they get. That's that's cool now. That's that's how they get. That's how they smash pussy. We that's become friends on Facebook, and you you interview people on skateboards to find out where they're from originally. Yeah, of course. Thank you. you really they're think they you really think they're from another they're not place? Not from New York. They're not from any of the boroughs. Oh, you're abs you're 100 percent wrong. They're from the Midwest, and they come here. They think it's a freaking playground. I think you're right about that. They think who it's thinks, a playground. Who thinks Manhattan's a playground? People that don't people live here. here. Yeah. No, they think they're cool. The, the they city's think too they, safe. Huh? The city's too safe now. No, they People think they're cool. They think they're on a skateboard. They're like cool because uh, yeah, it's a big city. It's the biggest city in the country. But like, I just, I make that's it my own. I make it I mean. my own. That's what they're doing. Mm -hmm. But they're not from out of town. Out of towners don't do shit. Out of towners are like looking around. They don't. When I moved here from another town, I didn't fucking. Well, they live here. People they, from the Midwest who live here. Live here. They do live here. They live here, but they're not from here. Oh, you're saying Giuliani. they're not Brooklyn people? No, they've been they here from. They've they been here. They're not from Bensonhurst. They have probably been here less than five years. Yeah. They're living in a, in an apartment with five people. And they just came here because it's like big, Gino, big playground. <laughs> well, Gino's a New Yorker. You don't know what Gino is. I know a little bit about the guy. What do you know? Uh, you know he has a lot of roommates. Nice I don't want to keep bringing it up because the nice sunglasses. Yeah, he does have nice sunglasses. Anything else that's that's, that's uh, bugging you? Singing, uh, the skateboarding, the oversized umbrellas. When there's a plane cr crash, all that survives is the black box. Oh my what god! What if they made that? This what part if they of your made act? Plane out of that? What's a joke out of your act? What's, What's with airplane food? Act, What's with airplane food? Black lady app. So the air. I, a lot of times I think the airplane food is delicious. And what's with? Uh, oh, you know what the key for airplane well, food is? Sit in the front rows. Mm -hmm. Then, then you have the options. When you sit in the in the back, all the options are gone because they only sell. They only have a certain amount of things they sell. Yeah. It's oh. not for you guys because you guys couldn't care. But I know my listeners. They do a lot of traveling, and this is a very Travel. popular uh, airport podcast. Like a lot of times, people when they're waiting to take off, they listen to this. So I'm saying, try to get bumped up, right? Do you try to get bumped up? How do you do that? I'm, I'm new. I'm new to this flying. Like thing. You're new to flying. I really am. I'm new like to flying. Really, you're like a you're like an old fashioned. I don't know nothing. Yeah. <laughs> How old are you? I'm forties. 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 You you never flew. No, I flew like three times in my life. Do you ever go to the? Do you ever take the Long Island Railroad? Or you mostly drove. 
Uh, I take the railroad, but I can't stand it. You Why? Know? It's just like, you know. Even during the day. Isn't... And you're sitting next to people and people start singing out loud. No, but then you just move. First of all, isn't it relaxing to just get on the train? Then you don't have to worry about driving or I parking know, I guess or I've anything? been doing it since I'm a kid, so I'm like, ugh. It's Go just... on what? Take, take, take the, the train? Yeah. But do you, did you drive today? Yeah. And then where do you park? Uh, I parked in a park garage by here. And then uh, name it because maybe you got a discount because we got a discount. So I'm gonna park. It's like over by Fifth over there. Yeah, that's that's not one of them. Anyway, <laughs> well, you guys really, you guys really don't get it. Anyway, I'm just fucking around. You don't get a thing, but but isn't driving like a pain in the ass? I think driving. What I like about driving is like you're in your own little. Your yeah, of own, course, everybody room. knows that. But like in Manhattan, they don't want you to drive here because no. it, it creates no, don't. like Mike uh, Bloomberg. I try not to, but I never leave early enough. I try to park over. A lot of times I'll park over by that uh, creek in the cave and I'll take the seven in. Right, even that's yeah, it's hard, hard to park around there, though, sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. I think they call it park and ride. That's on Long Island. That's where the. No, it's everywhere. What do you. Yeah, these places. Some of the guys never. He's only been on a plane three times. Hey. I can see him like. I can see him like Randy Quaid in the, what's that movie? Like. Like uh, the, the Amish guy? No, the Polish movie. Oh. I mean, the bowling movie. Where he's keeps, a kingpin. Uh, well, kingpin, where he's always eating everything. <laughs> he's smelling everything. That's so mean. Like you're smelling everything. You're like, what is this? It's called soda. You're like, where do I you put it in your nose? No, because he don't. You don't know. You're a fucking simpleton. And guess what? <laughs> guess what he plays on his show? What? He's a simpleton. <laughs> There's no such thing as acting. Right. There's not. Right. Do you have a bit about that? No, I don't. I really no, did. I, no I, I walked thing. into uh, no such thing as acting. Like Colin Jost, your boy, would he be able to play a tough guy in a fucking in a mafia movie? Probably no, not. he'd play like a fucking choir boy. It might be something. funny to see him try. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> not. It's but fun I'm when saying, they do like, that, they... you are where you are. Like yeah. even fucking. Why don't you write something for yourself then? I've been cast. Write a web series I, you know or why something. I don't want to write a movie because it seems like a lot of work. You got to get one of those fucking format things and put it in a computer what's that's it called? not hard final draft. final draft final draft i won't i won't that's deal with it hard. i won't deal with it i can get it yeah why not you I'll, I'll put the free one on your computer and you can just start writing I do have a name for my uh i do have a name for my one-man show it's called everything's not a joke isn't that great because yes. then when people go like that's not funny i go everything's not a joke right and that's that's the point of thing like like comic people think comics are all like laughing but we're we're, we're yeah. thinking oh. about like uh, things on a that's not a joke when a guy's on a skateboard on on a Manhattan sidewalk. It's not a joke. It's not to a you. joke. It's not funny to me. Everything's not a joke. Everything's no. not a joke, right? So now I all I can do is write it. Do I need Final Draft to write a one man show, or can I just write it by hand? I think you just write it by hand. Thank you. Yeah. You just need <laughs> a, a do a one man show. You need a comedy what? set to do a uh, one man show. You need a comedy set that doesn't have that many laughs, and you call it a one man show. Funny. No, you need you need a dramatic uh, undercurrent, which you, is you, you need to be able to cry once. Yeah. No, you need to be able to like pe make people sad. I don't. I don't know what I'm going to make people sad about. Like, I mean, I have a say hunch. you were molested or something. Yeah, no, that's what I will say. Yeah. But I'm. I might say. I might say I have one testicle because they're, they're never going to check. You know right. what I mean? Because I know uh, Des Bishop. Like when I did when I started doing comedy festivals, like uh, uh, I did Aspen and I did Edinburgh, like the same year. Every every European comic was like had had like something like one guy had a wooden leg yeah you didn't know you couldn't fucking check what are you guys looking at anyway you guys you couldn't check you could never you're not gonna be like show me uh, your wooden leg oh uh, des bishop who i'm a big fan of like you have autism yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> you think that, welcome do you think that like something like so well, you know the autism people go fucking nuts on you yeah They'll start biting me. I think my my son got bit at school. We think the guy might have autism or something. But they, they but it's too young to, to and it's a public school so you can't really go, "Hey, what's he in this school for?" cuz it's like that's where he goes, you know? Right. I keep telling Anyway, you wouldn't believe he has you look at speaking of autism. I cannot comment on this topic. You know what? I should do a one man show for real. I do a one man show about autism and he just sits in his chair the Why whole time. Why don't you time. do like a web series or something? Oh, come on. Why don't Just I yourself hang myself it. like fucking Chris Cornell? <laughs> That'd be easier yeah, to do. do. A web series about what? I don't know your life. Yeah, because my first of all, I can't even mention. I, I'm I'll, not... I'll I'll write something. Okay. For the two of us. Okay. All right. And what do we do? I don't know. You're my dad or something. <laughs> Mom is dad or something. First of all, I can't. Me and my wife got into another fight today. I told her I wouldn't talk about her. But sometimes I do. Sometimes I, I talk about it, and it's like, because it's whatever I deal with, I got to deal with. But, like, I, yeah. I, I'm glad we vented it today because 
because you end up talking about what whatever it is you know so i couldn't say i have autism because the, the autism people will come at me you know so it's it's a fucking fine line you try to keep it fresh but then you know like i don't want to talk about lenny or fucking jimmy or fucking all these other people you do one man show and call it autastic <laughs> i like that <laughs> You've never been diagnosed? I think he's my rock Ruby. You know what? I'm not kidding. Just call it autastic. I'm not kidding. My, I think he'll my rock Ruben. That'll be your one man show. Rock Ruben. You call good. it autastic and that says I like to eat crayons. And that's your show. Is, uh, I think that one man show. I think grown if I grew up in today's uh world that I would have been labeled with something like Asperger or something. I have a nephew yeah, that has probably. autism. He has a, his brother has My brother is and I I brothers? probably yeah, he's like severely autistic. Oh, it's it's heartbreaking, man. But you, you think you have a little bit of the Maybe. Screen? I've heard that. We definitely people. have it. Yeah. People definitely. We're who? comics. Definitely have Your it. Your doctor? No, just from people in general. At, like, roast so, battles and stuff. Uh Oh, people make jokes? Of, well, that's yeah. a cheap shot because your brother has it. Yeah. But, you know, Seinfeld says he he says he's, th he's, he's in a narrow fucking thing. Well, we're all on the spectrum somewhere. I because think. I think I think if, even if you're in a little bit of a spectrum when you start, then after a while you don't, like, like, uh, when people have regular conversations, I'm always like, okay, get get to the point. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I have no patience for like I've, regular conversation because they're they're that's people have regular conversations. That's like their way of like communicating, like like dogs barking. They're yeah. not saying anything, but like oh. people like when you talk to, to each other because then it's like you're open, they're open. But I, when I when people talk, I'm like, uh huh, uh huh. Why don't you write a movie right. like I Am Sam and call it I Am Kevin? <laughs> so, Kevin. What's I Am Sam? What is that it? movie that Sean Penn did? Oh, Penn. With the, uh, where he plays a retarded guy. He went full. Yeah, he went full <laughs> retard. I want to. I want to do a show where I, I'm everybody's retarded but me. That's great. Like, I, like I think I'm the only non-retarded person. You got to write it then. I did the uh, uh, final draft. Yeah. I did the, if I wrote it, Caltex, it's free. If I wrote it, and if I wrote it, would you put it in the final draft? Tom can help you, right? Yeah, sure. How many? What Tom? else is he good for? <laughs> hey, Kevin. Uh, I'll put this in final draft. Because, uh, I'll produce your show. No, he's got a job writing. Did you hear about that? What? I don't know. But I asked him to be on last week because yeah. I wanted when they were talking about the N word with Bill Maher. Yeah. I thought Tom would be funny because he he always says he has a lot of black friends. So I'm like, let's get a white guy's perspective on on black friends. Yeah. Mostly like the N word. So I thought it'd be funny. So I said, Tom, you want to come to the show? He goes, he goes, I got a job, motherfucker. I'm like, wait, you hate me uh, too? What's his job. I don't know. He got a writing job till July, but he's 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 wow. he's mad at me too. So I'm like, yeah. is every, everyone's mad at me? So I guess that's the thing, right? Are you a little mad at me when you see me at the brokerage next time? A little annoyed, a little annoyed right now. Are you doing De Niro? A little annoyed with you right now. I gotta say, it's De Niro of all time. Can you do De Niro? No. Can you do anything? I'm working on a Kevin Brennan impression. Yeah. Can you do? I just want to make the uh, veins in my neck pop out. And... Can you do any like? When the black guy goes up and he stinks. So it don't matter. <laughs> Do 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 do. Yeah. You do Christopher Walken? Yeah, everybody can. I can't. Well, it's easy. You just Talking. talk like this. No, that's I actually not that. very good. Actually, even that was terrible. When I, even when I when I listen to my tapes, I try yeah. to talk like a woman, or I'm like doing my my wife talking back to me. Yeah. It still sounds like me, totally like me. But I think I'm like affecting like some kind of like different kind of a voice. Well, let's watch Bell Bar make a pie. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> And then I got shit about that too, because I talked about it on on my show, and I talked about. Yeah, I heard it. Yeah, it was funny. Time. So people are like, he goes, people are like, drop the Bill Burr shit. I'm like, oh my god. Yeah, but why are you listening to those people? They tweet it. I'm not listening to them. They're tweeting, and yeah. then I see their tweets, and then I go, okay. You just got to do the show that you want to do. This is not it. Okay. Anyway, uh, uh, you want to plug anything? You're losing me quick. Uh, oh, is this, are we wrapping it up? Yeah. Okay. Uh. Oh. No, I'm in Florida next week. You guys see the? Did you guys see the uh, Tonys last night? I'm in Naples. Or as I call. Them. <laughs> no, where you, you're in Naples? Where? Uh, it's called Off the Hook, the comedy club in uh, Naples, Florida. Did you work there? No. And then uh, it, are you making a? You already booked your flight? Yes. Got a good seat. Jet Blue, yeah. And I got the extra leg room, and good. you got the TV. TV. Mike, what do you got? I don't know. I'll be at City Steam in Hartford in July. Good room. That's 15, good. That is a good 15. room. Yeah. I booked it like, myself. You booked it yourself? Yeah. Well, because my people are worthless. <laughs> you book your own gigs and then you tell, and then, and then what happens? They don't care? No. Oh. How do you book it yourself? Just email people. Oh, God, that's terrible. Anyway, I'll be at, uh, I'll be in Pittsburgh, uh, the 23rd with, uh, <laughs> room. 
It's some comedy thing with the radio station. DVE radio station. Congrats to the Penguins. Congrats, Penguins. Years in a row. And then I'll be in July. I'm going to be at a fucking uh, Fort Worth, Texas. So that'll be great because it'll be like 100 every fucking day. Oh, I'm there in August. The hyenas. Right? The hyenas. I think. Maybe. I got to I gotta look at my schedule. The hyenas? Right? People. Huh? Hyenas? Is that what Don't worry it's... about it. We got to wrap this up. My point Sorry. is I'll be there. So I'll, I'll give you more uh, heads up. And I'm just giving you some, a shout out on the big gigs coming up. I Something else I'm forgetting. Anyway. Uh, once again, uh, thanks for coming out on uh, June 8th, last Thursday. We're going to do another one soon once I talk to Gino and Aaron. Did they stop the music? Okay. Anyway, God bless everybody. God bless America. And don't bring your big big umbrellas. And skateboards. Skateboards when you see a big dumb guy coming at you. Yeah. He's got a beard if, you don't, if you're listening on... on uh, that's some good acting, Chris. Chris Roach. Look for him on Kevin. Can't wait.